Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Hump day. Welcome on in, everybody. Rob Ellis, Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks. What's up, my men? How we doing? Philadelphia just makes it too easy to talk, man. Talk sports, bro. We just – we get it all, man. We get it all from negative to positive to God is on top of the world, and we'll see in in, in, in November if, it, if it's all, you know, if it's all what we what he really said it is. We'll see around November where this, this Eagles team is. Baseball, know what we don't do. Girardi, I mean, it's just, it's just so much going on. They just make it way too easy to talk sports, man. Way too easy. We like. Hey, that. look, like here's that. the one. I, here's the one I like. Uh, you know, uh, Jacob Media uh, YouTube Network put out there yesterday. Should the Eagles go after James Bradbury? Um, and uh, the most of the comments are like, "Here we go again." Every time there's a player, we think we should get him. Just leave well enough alone. He's too expensive. So you know, it is funny how. Whenever a big name player comes up there, um, Philadelphia fans jump on. We need to get him. How he needs to do this. If how he doesn't do that, he sucks. He, I'm like, what? Come on, man. Seriously, back my, up for a minute. My favorite is the, the trade proposal. So <laughs> it's the best. So uh, you know, take the greatest player in any league, and you're going to give them your third string <laughs> offensive guard. <laughs> hey, you think they'd be interested? No, I don't think they'd be interested. Would I be interested? Yes. But the problem is they're not interested. There, there's that. But hey, look, I get it. It's it's the fans. They want what's best for their for their team. And we appreciate all of our all of our folks. By the way, smash right. that like yeah. button, man. We got to get that going hard right. today. And like who who's interested in, in Jalen Rager? No one. No, I, I mean, look, Barry, you don't think they were trying to shop him on draft night that whole weekend? Hundred percent they were. Nobody's interested. And you know, the problem you have is you cut them, it's a cap hit. And, and it's embarrassing. It's a bad look for the organization. So you keep them around. And that's how he survives for another year. I mean, that's really what it amounts to. There's no, there's no other reason for him oh. to be here. What is he, a fifth receiver now? And it's not like – I don't think at least he's going to be returning punts anymore. I think we've seen enough of that. So is he going to be on special teams or is he just taking up a roster spot? It, it's, that's, that's, there lies the problem because um, if, if you – Keep him on the roster. You have to legitimize him being on the roster. You can't just have him sitting there like a bump on a log. It's not like mm-hmm. he's an offensive lineman or, you know, or 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 something like that. It's somebody that's in a skilled position who should be able to at least be a gunner. Yeah. You know, something something in which you know doesn't require him being explosive is what they need to put him on. Well, look at look at what they do with Ortega Whiteside. For whatever we can we say about him, and there's a lot to say. At least he contributes that way on special teams. From that standpoint, he's turned into an okay special teams player. He's out of here. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, okay, he's okay. he's giving you more in that capacity than I think Rager's going to be capable of. Uh, okay. Now, we all remember how Rob, on our uh, draft show last Thursday, put it out there, and on Sports Take last week, that the Eagles were going to select a linebacker in the first round. Remember, right. he was adamant. I, I, I had a premonition. Adamant. That I, I am adamant as we sit here today and telling you, Jalen Rager will be on the 53-man roster come September. I agree. Gunner, 100%. Barrett is going the other way. I'm with you. I don't think he's going anywhere. I when, Howie came, when Howie came out and said, you know, we expect Jalen to be a part of our roster, they're doing everything they can. Now, you're right. He may slide down to the fourth or fifth receiver, mm-hmm. but the bottom line is he was a recent first-round draft pick. Yep. They are not going to give up on him that quick. They're going to find a way to utilize him. Still under rookie contract, not costing them a lot of money. He's going to be on his roster somewhere. Nobody's going to trade for Jalen Rager. Yeah. If they do, whatever front office trades for Jalen Rager, that GM should be fired for making I'm that trade. I'm well, they, they gave him they gave him um, permission for he and his agent to go out and seek trades. So I'm, I mean, I don't I'm, know where I'm, that goes, but you yeah. know. How many? It Barrett, takes two to tango, right? Barrett? Barrett, I mean, I hear right. you. Yeah, yeah I'm many, sure. I'm sure players? he wants a fresh start. I'm sure he yeah. does. But no. But do people want him? Yeah, exactly. How many players? How many players get this permission to seek a trade and end up right back with the same team they were with? I uh, know, but wanted them. 
it's very few and far between where you find a first rounder that um that's true that's true that they give that permission to um that they oh, they've given up after two years blood. after two years by the way hey by by the way is is uh, this true uh, am I am I understanding this correctly there's a what? there's a Barrett bill billboard what by the Walt Whitman <laughs> is this true? are you serious <laughs> look oh, somebody in the comment look, section yo, he can't uh, even speak and, and, and is that I true? apologize for whoever. <laughs> Whoever threw that out there, but is that is this happening? Is, is there a Barrett billboard oh, that I haven't goodness. driven past yet? Oh what? my goodness! What is wait. happening here? This is from wait uh, wait wait, wait guys from, from guys. our guy here. You know what? Guys, that's true I, too. T for tuna. I did not know. And Captain, he called me yesterday. As soon as he saw it, he called me. Is it just you? Where are Gunner and I? Are we not? Or, or is it for your other show? Well, it must be for his. Show, yeah. It must oh. be for his primary Wait, they're, employer. They're throwing that kind of money out there for you to be Bro, on the billboard I, now. I, I, I was. I was just. I'm just as shocked as you are. Wow, man! I haven't seen though. it yet. I have not seen it yet. But all I'm gonna say is, I did not know. In fact, I didn't know up until <clears throat> a week ago that oh they God. was going to be powered by me. I, the show was going to power. But I did. I did not know. You know, is I just there, go to work, man. I wait, just go to work every day. That's here's all the question. I do. Derek, here's a question I have. Have the accidents yeah. increased in that area on the Walt? Is there, is, there, is there a lot of distracted driving going on over there? I know, I, I know. See what you do to me, Captain. See, if I drive by there and see it, I'm not going like past this. it. Yeah. Hold on. Then that, look, he did it. Is that bad? No, it's like this. It's like, what just happened? Is that the only one the billboard, man? Is that true? It's just like it's just like that. That What is that Um, that commercial? With the new sensation hashtag dance, and he's dancing. And all of a sudden, the guy hits the back of the, the car. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Oh man. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He, I did uh, not mayhem, mayhem. Yeah, mayhem yeah, mayhem. dancing on the side of the road, and the guy's like, <laughs> "What?" Yes, it's a commercial where uh, you know this new um, the, you know the mayhem commercial. Oh yeah, where, you know, I love those commercials. And the dude's right. dry, the dude's looking at mayhem, and he just drives right into the back of a truck. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Well, hey, no, but seriously, I did not know. I did not know. Okay, I haven't I seen it yet. I bet, you, he, I bet you he designed it. I bet you he designed it, and and probably told him if you don't put it up there, I'm walking out. That's probably what he said. Exactly. He's big <laughs> time him. now, man. I know he, he is. Chief of Tune, but Captain Captain Tony, man, why would you do me like this? He man? did. He, and hold on, he, hold on. He just you put know, your dirty laundry. Right and and out you know there, what? Man. You know what the bad part is? He called me, and I didn't answer the phone because I was driving, and I stopped, and I called him back, and when I called him back. He and his wife will let me have. Don't you think you're too big for your britches? That you did it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Everybody okay. don't see wow. Doc knows. They'll put me back wow. in my place. Wow. <laughs> we got to keep Barrett in line, man. Wow. Yeah, everybody's doing it. It's a, it's every, this is a team Tam, effort. It takes Tam, a village. Right, right, right. Tam is like, you better not get a big head. You better not. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you, right. you guys see this from uh, you see this guy uh, comment from Daz Deals. He said, trade Rager for a new locker room vending machine. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Wow. I don't know if you can get wow. that much. Of Look, it's not good. It is not. I gotta ask you guys. Jocks. I gotta ask you wow. guys this too. And this is a, a slight confession. Okay. Uh -oh. So today, we all know what today is, right? May 4th, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And we know it's become May the fourth be with you, may the force be with you. It's yeah, become yeah, a yeah. total yep. Star Wars thing. I'm not a huge Star Wars guy. Oh, this yeah. oh no. Oh. I can't believe we're on the same show with I you. I can't man. Do, I can't work with you under these conditions. I'm just keep it real. Okay. How's Why that possible? Could you not? Like it's okay, how, but how, it doesn't it doesn't how, move the needle, man. Are you how's that, me? How, what? What do you watch besides sports then? What do you watch besides sports? I watch Honestly. like like, like I'm watching I'm starting the la I just watched the first two episodes of the last season of Ozark. I'm watching that, which has been great. Have you guys wow. watched Ozark? Oz Ozark I is the great. First three seasons. Phenomenal. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm up to the very last season. Two episodes in, I think there's like four left or five left. I, I'm I watching. You, that. I, I, I watch things, but I don't I'll know. tell you this: without giving it away, the last episode of season three will shock you. Three? Uh, well, we're in four now. You mean four? Yeah, I know four now. But but you're saying oh. you're catching up, right? No, I'm in four. So, I'm in. I'm in oh, the you're very in last. Okay. I'm okay, in the so very last know. season. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm so in the I'm very beginning. I'm in the very beginning oh, of three. I, it's uh. Oh, yeah. I, I won't give. Three. I won't give anything away. I'll I'll just tell you. It's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It is suspenseful. It's dramatic. I, I mean, it is awesome. It, the whole series has been ridiculous. You know, and the Ozarks, really. I used to go to the Ozarks when I was younger. Yeah, right. Not not too far from where you grew up in Missouri. Right. right? Saint, you know, St. Louis. And um, I'll tell you the most traumatic thing I've seen in the Ozarks. 
Um, well, you know, the Ozarks isn't really the nicest place for 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 black folk out there. Just to let you know. <laughs> no, so, you think? No, <laughs> right, no. right, right. So no. look, we're we're fishing and we're right at Bagnell Dam. Now Bagnell Dam, um, it's like you know, it's a big cliff right there by the dam. So we're on the we're on the, the high side instead of the low side. And up on that side, there's this big cliff. This was, cliff is probably around maybe fifty feet high. You know, it's really really high. Okay. And me and my brother were fishing, and there was some, there was some uh, guys up there, you know, yelling out racial slurs and throwing rocks over the side of it. And I was sitting there, right, and uh, my dad said, "You know what? You guys stay right here. Don't move. Don't you dare move." Now at the time, I'm like maybe eight years old. My oh, little little kid. Yeah, eight years old. My 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 brother's six, and my other brother's four. Mm-hmm. So we keep fishing, and mm-hmm. I don't see my dad for like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. He had went all the way around and snuck up behind him. Ooh. All of a sudden, I saw the rocks and stuff stop throwing, being thrown. <laughs> Next thing you know, I look Ooh. up, and I see him with one hand holding the guy over the ledge. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> over come the on, ledge man. with one arm over the ledge, and I see him smacking him. Bow, bow, wow. Bow, bow. What? And shaking him like this, threw him down. He grabs two of them and like yanked them over like this, you know, and and, and like he's gonna do it. Long story long, about 10 minutes later, he came back down, says we keep fishing. All of a sudden, the uh the game warden pulls up. Um, were you just up there uh harassing kids? And no, there were some kids up there that were throwing rocks down. Uh-huh. We told them to stop, but they kept doing it. they were yelling racial slurs. Yeah. Well, they said that you came up and I said, Well, no, I didn't touch them. But if um, where are they at? So I can talk to him about them saying, you know, racial slurs when my sons were sitting here. Yeah. And he's like, well, um, make sure, you know, you you know, I'm like, no, my pops was pissed. Yeah, right. Pissed. But he is held. Your dad, is your dad as big as you are? Yeah, my dad is. He was only, he's about 6'3", okay. but he outweighed me by about 20 pounds. And like Ooh. I said, my pops back was about this big. Strong. Like, I'm not, I'm not that guy. Like, people say, oh, you know. I'd be able to whoop my no. I, I at, at no point did I ever think that I could beat my dad up. He was lying on his deathbed, and I still didn't think that I would beat him. If I even thought that, mm-hmm. I would have thought he'd have came back to life and whooped me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the type of respect I have. For that's me, awesome, bro. man. I, I, but, yeah, I, I, I'm not I, the stories. Not, I, I don't mean the stories. Awesome. I mean what your dad did is awesome. <laughs> your dad, oh, yeah. your dad is your dad did some gangster stuff right there, man. That's bro, right. My, pops, my pops is holding people out some, over. The, he was something special, man. That's like that, that's almost like Nino Brownish, dog. Oh yeah, <laughs> you guys, you guys show the shirt, got it. Speaking of, hold up, let me tell the story real quick. Now, do you guys, do you guys have a wife that likes to critique you when you're on TV or radio when they listen the to time. you? And you know, I, I got, I'm not an, gonna I got say, an earful yesterday, but yes. Did you see? Yes. I'm not going to say my wife is my worst critic because you know she is my best critic. You know, um, same. She's always critiquing me, and you know, but sometimes you don't want to hear it, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So when we we were on our pre pre show meeting at eleven a.m. this morning. Remember, I had on a burgundy hoodie, yeah, you know, with the drawstrings on it. So I put it on a few hours before we had the meeting, and my wife walks past me. She there goes, it is, there it is, yeah. There you go. See, my wife goes, "You got to stop wearing hoodies." I said, "Why?" <laughs> I said, "It's a sports talk show." Rob and Barrett wear hoodies. She goes, "I don't like the hoodie look because I don't like the way the strings hanging off." I'm like, "What?" I can't wear hoodies. <laughs> now she keeps the house sixty five degrees, right? And, and I'm upstairs. You know how they talk about heat rises? Right. Ain't, no, ain't no heat rising up here where yeah. I am right now. Yeah. You know, so short sleeve shirt is the last thing I'm thinking about. So I said, okay, you know, I'm trying to keep peace, peace, you know, in the house. So I go into my my coffin. I get hundreds of different t-shirts. So I pull out this bad boy, Nino Brown, straight from New Jack City. That is right? a great <laughs> you know shirt, man. That's you know, am good. I my brother's keeper? New Jack yeah, City, I am, baby. I have you, seen you, that movie. You, yes. I am. Mm-hmm. I've seen that movie at least a hundred times, man. Yeah. No Let me question. Tell you something. Think about the cast of stars that was on yes. that movie back in the '90s before they were start. Judd Nelson. Yeah. Wesley yep. Snipes, Mario Van Peebles. Yep. Uh, you had Christopher Knight, the singer. Yep. Um, was Al B. Shore? Al B. Shore was in that, right? Yeah, um, was. Um, Brian McKnight was Bri- in there. Was he in it too? Yeah. Um, Chris and- Rock was a kid. Was Chris a Rock. Kid. Chris yeah, Rock. He- Pookie. Pookie. You know, I, 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 and Ice-T, man. Ice-T, Ice-T. Boy got on, uh, 
before he got on what's it was it before uh svu it yes, was on exactly. for 47 years he was exactly even today when i text barrett and other people other friends you know uh what's up pookie I just, yeah. I just, I just, I text, i've watched that movie so many times i can i can almost recite the the, the lines in the movie as the movie is playing Right. And you know we we have a friend Mike Gaddy who's a producer for um, NBC yeah, Sports great Philadelphia. Guy, Mike. Yep. He and I are always throwing um, New Jack Cityisms around, man. Every time we text or anything like that, and it's one of my all-time favorite gangster movies, man. I mean, I love lines, New Jack City. I dude, love that. people yeah. still use lines today. How if he moves lullaby his, you know, <laughs> his bleep. Yep. Wait. Well, hey, speaking of that, you know why, man? I, I'm, you know how these days you wear uh like they're like sneaker. Um, tennis shoe like dress shoes now. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, with suits or with yeah, with suits yeah. and stuff, right? Yes. So I'm, I, I, I went out, and got me some. I wore them the last two times on the show, and she's um, you like them shoes? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the new wave stuff. It's the yes. new way. That's what everybody uses. That she said, oh, yeah. okay. Oh, that's the move. Said, what do you though, mean? Oh, yeah, okay. Wait, that's that's the move. Do you like right. those shoes? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's not waiting, waiting for you to say the wrong thing. Yeah, then there's a follow up. <laughs> right. She says that because she doesn't like those shoes. Okay, yeah, that's that is a given. If she yeah, says, oh, that. Yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, okay. all right. Um, or are I'm you like, what do you mean? That? What's are wrong with you? That? Are you gonna wear that? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's on. And see, and see I'll, I'll show my wife, you know, she, my wife's the same way. She goes, I don't like the tennis sheet look with suits. And I said, Hunt, everybody's doing it on the sports shows. I yeah. show her shows on ESPN, Fox Sports, right. all the analysts, ex players are wearing the sneakers that are color coordinated with the outfits and stuff. Yes, I even, I even have a collection of sneakers where I try to color coordinate with the jeans or yeah. whatever. Like, you the, know, me, I always like do that. that. Yeah, I always exactly. Do that. I, the sneaker is so comfortable, and it's like everybody's doing. You see people yeah. going to weddings now and stuff you wearing know where sneakers. I, they're jealous. They're mad because they wear high heels and they hurt their feet. Yeah, bro. that's right. true. Exactly that's a good point. Is, good point. The only time I don't necessarily, and it depends on the sneaker, but with a suit, I'm not as, as in love with it. I like it better with the sport coat and either slacks or jeans. But with yep. the, with the straight suit, the sneaks are eh. It's eh. I don't hate yeah, it, yeah, but it just yeah. depends on on the sneak, though. Well, you got to you know? get a pair of Kevin Cole esque type of shoes when you yeah, wear, yeah, wear exactly. a suit. You know, yeah, you can't be wearing something that something's all torn right. up. Or, and I wear and I don't no, I, I don't no. wear I will wear suits. I wear a sports jacket, but yeah. I wear jeans yeah. with it. That's that's my I don't I don't like to wear a suit suits. You know, right? Yes, I mean? I, I, I keep my like, sneakers clean. You know, my yeah, sneakers right. got to be clean so they look you know look look the part. You know, 100%. well look at Seth now, Seth. Seth wants to wear a full suit, yeah, a shirt and a tie to uh to my to the post game pre or post game mm -hmm. show. I don't I don't do that. I just wear a sport coat, uh, um, button up jeans and those sneakers. You know that's that's yep. just my yep. look. I don't want to look and I don't want to look like him because that's his thing. You know what I'm saying? That's his thing. I got my thing and you know that's what it is. But you know I mean like uh you you like them? I'm like yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> I paid a lot of money for these shoes too. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? They're nice. I mean, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. That, and then like, when I find something, my feet are big. So when I find something, I can't just buy. If I if I, if I buy it and they fit good and I like them, you buy. I buy every single color of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. single color. Of them. Hey, so, you guys. You see in our private a uh, private chat with with just us. Uh, our producer Xander Krause says oh, he's man, never I'm seen about, I'm about an to, I'm episode about to of Star show. Wars. Man, you got to go, Xander. You got to go, bro. I'm sorry. I, I'm I've like, seen them. Out. Like I got to tell you guys. I, like I remember when I was a kid, little kid, Star Wars and uh, the Empire Strikes Back and all that was was huge when I was a yep. little little kid. Right, right. I've seen a couple of them, but I don't think I've seen one since the what was the job of the hut one? Like that was the last one I saw. And if I'm what? flipping around, I'm like I flip around. I see Shawshank or Goodfellas or New Jack City. Yeah. I'm stopping. <laughs> If I'm flipping around and Star Wars is on, I keep going, man. That's I, I can't, man. man. I'm telling I watched you, one man. this morning. I watched Return of the Jedi was on today. Man, what? It was. A, you didn't tell this me. Morning. You well, didn't tell I mean, me. I caught the end of it. I caught the end of it. It's just not my a cup of tea, man. I don't know. Hey, uh, back in February, we went to um, went to Disney World down in Florida, and we hit three parks: Epcot. Um, we hit. Um, that's rich people stuff, there, uh, Rob. <laughs> um, what's, what's the one? What's the one the kids love the most? Um, Disney, Disney Lab, Disney Lab. Uh, I can't think of the one, but we also went to Hollywood Studio. Um, Hollywood and of course, Studios they have a, yeah. they have all of this Star Wars stuff, man. And right. dude, they got the ships and stuff. And I was like, this, 
wow. Like I was 10 years old. I was like, wow, I'm taking all these pictures with all the ships behind me and stuff. And then you get in this Star Wars simulator. And when we were so packed, you know, we were in the first row. So the screen is right there in front of you. And yeah. your chair is going like this and you're going through valleys and stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh, I'm enjoying this. I'm missing like a 10 year old kid. I can't wait to go back and do it again. That's the first place I'm going. Yeah. And, and look, I'll be the first one to tell you, like, it's me. Like, there's way more people. Dudes are walking around in Star Wars uniforms today. They're like Wookiees or whatever those things are called. Jedi, yes. you know? Like, I get Wookiees. like it's it's yeah, it's me, man. It's not, I get it. Like, C3PO just knocked on my door. I don't know what's happening. But like, I know it's me. I know it's me. I'm me, on, Rob, Xander that's... and I are in the minority man i'm telling that's you not american man if you don't know star, you're not part of star wars man yeah, that's not american bro i know man that's just i gotta I, I gotta be honest i'm getting killed for it but that's all right i, I always keep it real with people i have to all right so i wow, you guys, by the way last thing did you see the dude jumped on stage with Chappelle? oh did no you, I didn't. did you see what what i don't know what exactly went yeah. down but when they were yeah. wheeling that dude they, they had him on a on a stretcher the guy who jumped up there not Chappelle. the guy who jumped up on a stretcher about to load him in the ambulance, his arm was going oh, the yeah. other way. Oh, so yeah. I don't oh. know if Chappelle got him or security got him or what went down, but this dude was all kinds of messed up. Who jumped well, up there. well, initially Chappelle took him down. The right. guy gets up and runs back behind the stage, I guess. And all of a sudden he is jumped by like 20 something dudes, security oh. guards, police. And uh, they said he had superficial cuts. I bet they jacked him up backstage. It's Even Jamie Foxx jumped on stage, okay? And then the, the, the funniest part was Chris Rock comes out and says, hey, was that Will Smith? I'm cracking <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But supposedly, you know, the more serious note, supposedly Chappelle has had to increase his security detail yeah. uh, because of a lot of jokes he has made um, about the transgender community. Yeah. Um, and this, you know, so... Uh, he's been getting a lot of backlash for this, so he's increased his uh, security detail and stuff. But, dude, that was a wild scene. You see all these different videos on TMZ, CN CNN, yeah. all these different platform Reuters um, about what happened. I mean, it's, you know, from a distant and grainy. But you see the shot. You're right. We see the shot. This dude's arms bent back like a noodle. Barry, you got to oh, see no. it, man. It, it oh, is I'm trying crazy. to find it now. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, no. I, I can't – I don't even know, like, exactly the extent of it. But it – it didn't look good, this guy's arm. But, you, hey, man, you jump on stage, you deserve whatever you get. Whatever goes down, it's, Yo, it's on you as far yeah, as I'm concerned. Man. This dude, Dave Watson, said Baird has a white castle billboard. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes. He I wishes. Need a sponsor like that. Get, we need to get that sponsor going, Man, we ain't getting white castle on here, man. Yeah, yeah no, dog. No, no, I mean, no, no white castle. Blow All up, right, man. So, we hey, blow up. Uh, here's we'll, what we had. Blow here's something we, up. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, today we got Amy Fadul at twelve thirty. We're going to talk some Sixers. We got a game two tonight. Sixers Heat at one o'clock. Shield Capati is going to be joining us from the mm -hmm. Athletic. We'll get Shields' overview of the Eagles draft. And I also we're getting to that point now. So the draft's over. There's still moves to be made. Don't get me wrong. But then you start to sort of shift your focus to, all right, like where are they now? Like what? How good is this team at least on paper right now? As we head into the division, and the beauty with Shield is not only does he keep a close eye on the Eagles and he's based right. out of Philly, but he's a guy who looks at the whole you know big picture here too. Right. So right. I'm looking forward to talking to, to Shield as well. Like I said, we'll get into the Phillies a little bit later, mm -hmm. and we got a lot of ground to cover. But give me your sense right now as we sit here. What are we seven hours from tip off? Whatever it is, are we looking at the same thing? A repeat of Game One here, guys, with, with the Sixers, or do you think there's some kind of chance? Maybe they saw something. Maybe Miami isn't. Quite as impressive. By the way, no Lowry again tonight for Miami, and we know Embiid's not playing. But but what's, what's your sense, Barrett, of, of Game Two here compared to what we saw maybe in Game One? I'm hoping um, I'm, I'm hoping that Harden comes out with the same vigor that he had the last game in the um, first half that they had. Yeah, that they that they had um, against the Raptors. Mm -hmm. If he comes out with that intensity, you know, I, I, I can no longer get by with like eight shots a game, you know, come yeah. on now. One shot the fourth quarter, man. For, See, for and, that, and that's when your stars step up. Yeah. Uh, I'm used to, you know, if, if, if you are a superstar, you're getting, you know, a, a, a max contract, then you need to play accordingly. You know, regardless of what happened in, in, in with the Lakers mm -hmm. and Westbrook, he still went out there and gave max effort. He wasn't worth a donut's hole, but he still gave max effort. He gave, um, you know, he tried everything he could to get his shot back, you know, driving to the hole. He just mm -hmm. can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. 
I don't see the same intensity with Harden. I don't see the same drive to be great in Harden. I saw it before, but I don't see it right now. Yeah, and, that's, and, that's fair, Barry. I, I, and I think I think I don't think it's the drive is there, and I'm not sure if he can physically do. That's a bad combination, by the way. If, right, if both right, of those. Right. But you know? I, it almost felt like when things started really going, you know, they they like they played a really tough first half. When things started going against them in the third, Harden was kind of just content to let it go that way, right? As opposed to like I'm stopping this thing right now. I'm right. I'm the guy who's going to stop the bleeding. I and that worries me, man. Like you know, for whatever Embiid is, and for for some of his faults, you know the dude is giving you everything he's got when he's out there, and it's just frustrating. Here's the way I see it: um, number one, 76ers have to hit their outside shots. Look at the difference in a game last night between Boston and Milwaukee. Celtics mm-hmm. couldn't hit the, the ocean uh, from outside the first first game. Man, they couldn't miss uh, last night against Milwaukee, and they won by twenty plus points. You know, so now it's going to be point counterpoint. We'll see what happens Saturday in Game Three and how the Bucks adjust because the Bucks beat them up in Game One. Mm-hmm. They, you know, the 76ers, to stay in this game, they have to hit the perimeter shots. They're not going to. They're not going to beat Miami going trying to go to the inside. Plain and simple. Even though Miami is not a big team, a tall team, Miami collapses and defends the paint extremely well. James Harden is not. It's the same thing as the Raptors series. James Harden is not going to get that little, you know, stutter step down the paint with frequency like we saw him do at times during the regular season. It's not going to happen. So they've got to knock down the threes. I don't see the 76ers winning this game. If if Embiid is not in there, I don't think the 76ers win this game, plain and simple, because Embiid forces you to change things. You have to double down on Embiid, especially when you're a smaller team. Um, and because, you know, you got – Look at the guys the Sixers have in the middle right now. Ball Oof. Reed, Oof. you know. I think, I think. Can we not? I think look? Barrett. I think Barrett could DM up one on one, and Barrett got bad knees. Hey, I watched. <laughs> I watched Barrett get up and down the floor in our charity game that we played a couple weeks. How back. was it? He, he, uh, none of us really distinguished ourselves. I'll just put no. it that way. Okay. okay. It All wasn't right. good. It wasn't a good sight. Just yes. to let you know, it what it what it, 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 I bet, but I, I tell you this: our friends, I our think, labor friends, took it to us a little bit. Right. To, right. If we're being honest. Did they? Yes. Oh, no question. I mean, yes. those guys practice for it. And we'll know better. Next year, I am I am going to be prepared for that game. I am next too, year. man. I'm, I'm going to practice. I'm going to be prepared. Yeah. yeah I they, usually play a lot of basketball. I didn't pick up a ball for two years. Bro, I didn't that. pick me too. So I'm, I'm pissed off. Yeah. I'm mad. This, I'm, I'm still smoldering over this, bro. I'm still <laughs> pissed off. Dog, they whooped our tail yep. and then made us like it. Yeah, they, they was did. laughing and everything. Yeah, we got we have to be better. But let's oh, yeah. hold that thought because we got Amy coming up, and I want to talk to Amy about this matchup with Game Two. Mm-hmm. Of course, Amy does a great job NBC Sports Philadelphia with uh, with Jim Lynham and Mark Jackson, our buddy. So we'll talk to Amy when we get back. So don't go anywhere, Gunner. You want to hey, add something real quick? Yeah, I, I told Amy yesterday. I said, um, "Hey, appreciate you coming on, but I Here cannot be held responsible for questions that you might be asked." So there it just, comes. I just gave her she warning. She said that too. She, she still agreed that too. She said. Um, yeah. I can't be responsible for it, nor is Gunner going to be responsible for it. So See? See? he's he, be... just be ready. I'm oh, like, God. no, it's no. Poor easy. Amy. You ready? She's already having regrets at this point. <laughs> all right, let's get a quick one here. Let's go, all get set. We'll do a little Sixers when we get back. One o'clock, Shield Capadia. We'll talk birds with Shield. D Gun, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis. Uh, we are Sports Take. Hey, I want to remind everybody look, we know how difficult it is to trust somebody with your finances. It can be a really scary proposition. I'm right there in the front of that line. Trust me when I tell you. But I can say from personal experience that someone that I trust with my finances is Jim Murray with Principal Financial Group. Jim does an amazing job, whether it's a retirement planning, 401k review, insurance review, or you have a small business. Any help that you need with employee benefits, that's another resource Jim can assist you with. I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollover in the past with Jim, and he's done an amazing job for me and my family. I could not be happier. Give him a call, 610-996-4751. That's 610-996-4751. Or email Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y dot Jim at principal, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L dot com.
stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV, now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Lincoln Financial Field is home to more than just our hometown team. It's a landing place for dreams. Invest in the future of our students from all over Philadelphia and get an exclusive tour of the stadium at the Blocks Aspire to Dreams Gala hosted by Brian Taff of 6ABC. While we aspire to build, our students aspire to dream. Join us for the Blocks Gala on Thursday, May 5th at Lincoln Financial Field. Seats are limited, so reserve yours today at blocks.org slash gala. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Go for the midnight years. Go for the game. Go for the hits, go for the fans, go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Yes, welcome back, everybody. Hump Day, Rob Ellis, Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Sports Day, Jacob Media, YouTube Network. All right, so Sixers tonight, game two in Miami. And we thought, who better to speak with than Amy Fadul, <clears throat> who heads the studio pre- and post-game show with Mark Jackson and Jimmy Lottam. And I also needed Amy just to get in here and save me from these two guys. I can't really take much more. Amy's getting her shot uh, centered up and – we're uh, getting your mic connected. We'll get there. We'll get there in a second. But I'm the nice. Hey, I'm the nicer of the two off. guys. You scared her off before the break, Gunner. Look, I, I warned her. I just, she knows us. She knows us all well. I said, "Hey, look, we want to talk basketball, but hey, I can't. I can't be held responsible for what direction this conversation could go at any given moment. I mean, yesterday, you know, like like yesterday, the conversation. I, as I said, as we close the show, yeah. yesterday by far was my favorite show of all the shows that we've done so far. The show was off the hook. Okay, and, she's and, good. And, and, and there she is. Amy, there we're, we're not going to make you talk fishing for a half hour like Gunner <laughs> nope. wanted to. Oh, nope. that was such a great segment that two people really, really enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it, man. Correct, Loved Amy. It. What are you trying to say? Derek and Barrett, oh, yes. Barrett love that. Amy comes out a little jab. I like that it. Was, I, uh, I, I mean, I loved it, but I don't know that I loved it for the same reasons that Derek and Barrett and maybe viewers loved it. But there was a high <laughs> comedic value in that. And the, the, the shenanigans that went on leading up to, during, and after the taping was always uh, really, see? really see? fun. See? See, I'm going to tell you the truth. It was, it, it was, I, they should have never stopped the show because even Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley was a fan of it. You know, yeah, because he's, he's southern, so he's yeah. you know he's like yeah. a redneck. Yeah. He 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 <laughs> talked redneck. about the blue gills I was catching. He talked about the blue gills. He said, "Bro, what, what were you out there catching? Minnows, guppies, yeah, I'm like, fish." <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. For for the people that don't remember the show and its brief uh, appearance, Derek would actually like catch legit fish, and <laughs> Barrett's fish would be about this yeah. big. Yeah, I mean, you you couldn't. It wasn't anything. It wasn't even bait. It but was, do you guys remember the reason you guys started that show? Like the whole reason we even like got there? Do you remember the first time you guys teamed up together? No, what was it? Like, you did the, the mini golf in at the Super Bowl. 
Yes. That's right. Uh, That's yes. right. I'm glad I'm yes. here for this. Thank you. Well, thank you, Amy. <laughs> we can't even remember this stuff. Thank God you're here. Oh that was the God. mini golf. We're, we're in the Mall of America. Obviously, it's this monstrosity, and they have like, you know, rides and everything. They have a mini golf course, and these two go out there and play. And it was just nothing. There was no script, obviously, if you watched no. it. No, uh, and it was nothing. It got but ridiculousness. Yeah. Ridiculousness. And, was, and, and Amy, I was ticked off because he won. I, I, exactly. I don't like. I don't like to lose the tiddly winks, but I got him back though. I got him you back. Did. Every Yo, episode I, of fishing that, with Derek and Barrett. What? Well, no. Here's the thing too. So we do all these episodes of the fishing, you know, competition, and it comes down to the last one. We're tied mm -hmm. going into the last one. So I catch a nice sized bass. Bear catches like about 10 of these little bluegills like this. So the the, 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 the storyline was whoever catches the most fish wins. Right. So yeah. he kicked my butt because he caught a school of, he, he tapped into a school of minnows. Oh, you geez. know, I caught the biggest fish. And he, no, no, I, I caught the biggest. Remember, I caught that. No, car. you did. You did catch one. Yeah. But the I thing is, every car. fishing competition should be by weight. That's otherwise, it's, who cares? I caught but, a thank car. You. I, I, thank I, you. Caught like a, I caught like a four pound car, five pound you car. Snag, you snagged it in a tail. That don't count. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't. You're, fishing you're, is fishing. I brought the fish in. I landed the fish. You did. You went and grabbed the fish. That totally well, counts. Whatever it takes. Yeah. We, we, we can never. It. We can never get Amy out there to fish with us, though. Oh, hold on. I was. I was invited one time with Barrett. Never with Derek. No one's ever allowed to go. <laughs> There's to a running anything theme. with Derek. You can't go to his yes. house for Correct. barbecue. Correct. You can't oh, go fishing oh, with him. You yes. can't hang out with him ever. Yes. Oh, Correct. Yes. Amy. Yes. I that invited. Really? I invited her. I invited her whole family to come out. On the We're going to take you up on it this summer. On the boat. Yes. Mm -hmm. I invite the whole family. On the boat. I invite him. Derek, yeah. you've yet to. It's a running it's theme with Derek, the oh, lack of yeah. invitations. Yes. I mean, listen, these are people yes. that have known, for people watching and listening, these are people on right now that have known Derek for decades yep. at this point. Yep. And wow. we've never, wow. like, nope. Trish used to like make us cookies and Derek would like kind of sometimes <laughs> yeah. bring them in. Not always. What do you mean kind of sometimes? No, he, he would, like, would just, she'd be like, oh, oh I've seen him. She'd be like, oh, I made yeah. like 30 cookies. I'm like, I saw like four. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. come on, time out now. I oh, always brought the cookies mm -hmm. when she mm -hmm. asked me After to you ate them. Yeah. yeah, after you in the car, on the long ride from Bear, Delaware to South Philly, there was like, Amy said, like three and a half left. That's about this though. That's a 40. Five minute ride, bro. I get hungry. I'm Apparently, just to like well, is, look at this, bro. man. Talk about loyalty. My captain said that Amy could take my spot on the boat. What is that all about? That's nice. Oh, I can't do right. that to well, me. I am more right. fun. So, yes. Oh my god. Let me, let, me, let me show the folks what we're talking about here. So there you go. Just in case anybody was wondering, there you go. See. That is Thank you. low. That's right. Down. That is. Hey, I appreciate you, know, you Captain. To, we to keep defend, it here. We keep it real. The comment section. We do. <laughs> to defend myself against Amy's comments, uh, I am an introvert, very shy, um, and I don't mingle well. You know, I, I I'm not good at small talk with people. And she can't even say it with straight that's, face. That's that's. <laughs> it's not even remotely true. I, yeah, I, I know. Stop lying, dude. I, just, knows I mean, listen, I'm serious. Derek, it's like we haven't seen you for 20 years in the Eagles locker room, literally talking to everyone and becoming friends with everyone. Perfect strangers, even. Yep. So yep. your introvert little take is not really nah. uh, going to fly, but I appreciate the effort. Right, right. We're not buying well, I, any of it. I Bye. really don't like, I really don't like you. Yeah, yeah, I don't like people Thank you. with the go out and, and the hang and, out and the... You see me on Facebook. That's all photoshopped. I don't hang out with anybody. <laughs> and 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 why did I invite you on the show today? Because <laughs> you love me. But I do. <clears throat> but I will say this: there are people that have been to my home. Rachel yes. McCauley, who is our producer, she's been here. People just show uh, up. That's how Lisa, we do. Lisa Hillary uh, came over Again. for Thanksgiving one day. My wife said, "That's very nice." Sure, invite she's her. Canadian, so and, um, one of your one of your best friends, uh, Jen Daniels. Yes, they were I do. They were coming back from a story in Dover, Delaware. They were at Dover Downs, her and Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Reggie. it was convenient Dutchman. because she was near. Exactly. It was a and, swing by yeah. and he couldn't it's say true. no. Yeah. It's true. You know, and Jen goes, hey, where are you? It was on a Sunday. Say, hey, where are you? I said, my wife and I are at Walmart. Well, you know, Tom and I thought we'd stop by. My, my wife and I look at each other, race home, you know, to be gracious host. You know, so, but, nice. so yeah. Jen had to invite herself. Essentially, true. Well, saying. I can't wait to this what? summer when I'm on my what? way to Lewis, Delaware, and I'm like, what? hey, Derek, we got an extra two hours to kill. Mm -hmm. We're just going to stop off and bear. We see that exit every time we drive to Lewis. The number time. you the number you have text is no longer in service. Exactly. Please try again. <laughs> Amy, you're the always welcome in my off. home. Yes. I know. I know. I, I get I kid because I care because I know you're that's always true. Derek welcome, has, Amy. He has invited us down. So it's it see? is it is see? true. 
Okay, there you go. Like, right. you like, you know, when it's like on Christmas and he knows we're busy. But other than that, <laughs> why do I? Why do I feel like this is like a hostage where Amy has to say that? Wow. Yeah, I, I'm like, very happy. I show up something. Yeah. Yes, I'm very happy with not, my captors. Oh. Yes, okay. This is great. I'm having a good time. Yeah. Yes, it's a lot of fun. Am I my brother's keeper? There yes, it is. Oh, there it is. Nice yep. shirt. Yeah, now, the, the shirt, shirt I really need him to wear at one point, Amy, is the Billy Ocean shirt. He's also a huge yes. Billy, uh, Caribbean queen. He needs to, yes. to break that out. Where's that what's at? Wrong with, what's wrong with Billy? What's, I know that's your nothing's, guy. Nothing's wrong with Billy. Okay, yeah. all right. We're not yeah, making fun of him. Take it easy. It's all right. I got a lot of shirts. You know, right. Now that my wife, my, no, now that my wife says Santa I can't wear hoodies. Oh, well, that, that shirt's retired. I'm not doing that one anymore. That's retired. That's what I have is my phone like picture for the, you. The, the Black Santa, t the black yes. Santa shirt? Oh, yeah, that's yours. I don't Amy. think you can see it. But you, can you see it? A little. Yeah, oh, yeah, little you can see bit. that a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Who is that, Sylvester? Hey. Or on the. Uh... I, I, I can't find it? the old one. That's, I've had that picture in there for years. Amy, so I, I don't know Amy, where to find it. Amy, I will admit, due to COVID over the last two years, D gun is swollen up a little bit. That shirt's a little too tight to be worn oh, in public. So what? That shirt, third person. Just, third person, it, Derek. Yes. It, that's just, that shirt. That shirt has been retired, Amy. You right. Well, that maybe we'll, we'll get you on a program and we'll bust it back out for Christmas. There you go. I, I smell a sponsor. There you go. All right, Amy. We got to ask you, Sixers tonight. <laughs> if you could put your finger on one thing that they have to do differently to survive this thing, what? There's a lot, but just pinpoint <laughs> one for us for them to win this game. What would it be? Three point shooting. Okay. I mean, I think everything else is going to, you know, they won't, they won't do all of those three things. They won't rebound as poorly. Uh, they won't shoot as poorly from three and they won't turn the ball over. All those three will not happen all three at the same time. One of them may happen again. But I think if you look at that game defensively, they played a pretty good game. You know, the, yep. the Heat only shot. 47%. They were only 25% from three. So it wasn't like the Heat were lighting it up. We all saw Tyler Hero, so it's easy to get that number skewed, but it really wasn't. They they didn't, you know, light anybody up from three point or even um go crazy. I thought defensively they were okay. If they mm -hmm. had made their usual number of threes, which you know, after the trade, they were the best three-point shooting team in the league. All year, they were always like top six, top five, top ten in that range. They were always a really good three-point shooting team. And then Harden arrived. Obviously, he spaced everything out a lot more. And Tyrese Maxey continued his um, skyrocketing three-point percentage. That guy's not going to go, you know, one for five or oh for – I think he was one for five or one for six. So that's not going to happen again um, if they make more than half. They make 12, say 12 of – 26 or you know just under 50 percent i think that's a game that they can win the problem is is that when they go zone the rebounding is going to fall off because you just can't that's just not that's how it is so you play zone that's the big like obviously a really big takeaway from that is that you leave the team open to hitting threes which thankfully the heat did not they shot poorly from three but they were able to rebound so every three ball that didn't go in but they had 15 offensive rebounds. That's yeah. two games yeah. worth mm -hmm. in most people's cases. So when you're, when you're playing that zone, which I get why the Sixers have to because they don't mm -hmm. have Embiid trolling the paint. They have to try to do something. Mm -hmm. I think you got to even get junkier with the defense. Mm -hmm. Let's, like, put one guy in the box and have four guys out there. Like, let's just really kind of – and you saw Doc Rivers do that a little bit, not with the junk defenses, but obviously switch up the zone here and there. But, like – rotate in 11 guys played in that game like actual minutes before it started getting kind of you know obviously out of control in the fourth but that to me was telling me that he's just trying to throw different looks at them trying to throw them off their game and unfortunately the Sixers didn't hit now obviously the looks you know when he brings in whether it's Bassey or Paul Reed mm -hmm. or George Niang and they go small ball is not going to take Spolstra off guard like it did maybe the first time but if they hit those threes just Make 12, 12 three-pointers, which is lower than their average. They're usually right around 13 or 14 threes uh, per game in the season as far as made threes. I think that that's a win. Um, the turnovers were a problem. I just think that was, was one of those things. I don't think they're going to turn the ball over that much. I mean, obviously, we've seen them have those issues in the, in the playoffs. The, the game against the Raptors where they had 24. Also a game where they got out-rebounded. Also a game they played a lot of zone. So I think the correlation is there. But threes, if I had to pinpoint one of their three problems, three-point shooting would be – that's got to improve. Hey, Amy, do the 76ers have a <laughs> chance of winning a game if Embiid's not in the court? Yeah, I think they have a chance winning a game do they have a chance of winning a series with him out there without him out there no yeah, i mean yeah. let's be honest i just think that there's no way you take four against this heat squad who's exceptionally deep 
Um, yep. Duncan Robinson doesn't even get on the court anymore. That's how deep they are. They don't even need him at this point. He's, I guess, fallen out of favor. I'm not how sure that guy that? started. I was shocked. Yeah, he was Did a he starter. Get any run at all? Nothing. None. Didn't Crazy. even see the court. So, Without Lowry, too. You're down a bunch. Yeah, I thought that was a little odd, but I guess, you know, with Hero heating up, and let's face it, I mean, I know Tyler Hero is the sixth man of the year. He plays starter minutes. He's a starter. Yeah. He's a six man in name only, which is fine. You know, that's how they, they, they play it and they run it. But I think they can win a game without Joel Embiid. I think it's, you see what Tobias Harris is doing. You're thinking, yep. gosh, the guy got to 27 points. He's rebounding all over. He's doing a good job defensively. You need someone else to help pick up the slack. You need another 20 point guy, whether it's Tyrese Maxey or James Harden. I think it's Maxey. I think he'll be your guy. He usually doesn't have two bad games in a row. That's really rare for him. He has a good mm-hmm. bounce back. You know, we were talking on pregame, and I asked Mark Jackson, like, what number do you see as far as shots for James Harden to put up? Like, do we need to see Rockets James Harden? And he's like, we need to see close. And then you see 13, and I'm thinking, maybe he can't get to 20 because of the style he plays now. He can't get to 20 <laughs> shots. He can't, he can't. So I'm like, he died. that's not good. He died. <laughs> one shot in the Harper. fourth, aim. One. One. Come on. I mean, I that's mean- the game. They started the fourth, Rob, only down eight points in a game that, mm-hmm. you know, it was there for the taking. Mm-hmm. So being aggressive, um, I know that he's had to change his style of play this season, whether it was with the Nets or now with the Sixers. And he he's not, doesn't have the same step. He can't blow by the first defender anymore. But he's not going to get those calls. Stop trying to get That's the right. calls. Yep. You're That's not right. going to get the calls. They're not happening. We all Amen. have seen the playoffs in the Sixers series and every other playoff series. That's right. I mean, th- think about the foul on Embiid. He broke his eye bone, and they initially called the foul on him. That mm-hmm. tells you everything you need to know about how this game is yep. being called. So you're not mm-hmm. going to get the calls um, the way you think, and especially Harden. I think that they know that. They, mm-hmm. they kind of come in thinking, this guy's going to hunt for calls. We're not going to reward him from the jump. And then, you know, then he just kind of goes back into his couple double dribbles and then shoots up a three, and maybe it goes in, maybe it doesn't. But this two-point percentage is atrocious. It's, it's really hard. bad. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, in order for this team to win – the pace has to kick up a little Mm -hmm. bit. You know, you cannot play half-court basketball with the defense that the Miami Heat play. So I I think the ball is going to have to be in Maxie's hand a lot more, which is going to hold James kind of, you know, you know, take away from what he thinks he can do now because he's one of those guys he wants to set it up and be that point guard. I need uh, Therese Maxie to get the amp it up a little bit. And and if you look at Harris, Tobias loves Mm -hmm. that pace. He can get up and down the court. They have guys that do that very, very well. That bowls well if they can get that pace going. What is the likelihood that Doc is going to allow them to go out there and run and gun? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. 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 Did we lose Uh, us? All right, we'll get no. Amy back. Xander, let's uh, let's take her down and let's try. That was to get a her. great question, right there, man. Barry, your probably, so probably amazing. your yes, probably your best question since the inception of this show. <laughs> I heard oh, it. I heard it. Amy, I don't know that happening. was such a great question. I heard it. Technology. <laughs> I thought you were shocked by, <laughs> by, by <laughs> Believe me, I heard it all. I heard yeah. it all. I was like, wait a minute. It's a whole like thought process with actual like stats and stuff that you Barrett. We're rubbing off on you. I love it. You're becoming a real reporter now. Um, but yeah, to your to your question, to your question, Barrett, about pace. I mean, obviously they have to slow it down to a certain extent with James Harden out there. That's just how he plays now. But it starts with rebounding. You gotta rebound and run. You gotta get the ball and get it out there. So if Harden can be more active on the boards, then he can outlet pass, and then there's your mm-hmm. pace element, right? Mm-hmm. So if you, you, Mark always says, Mark Jackson always says, listen, I need you to run after a make, and I need you to run after me. Like you have to be active. You can't be sitting there watching the ball either go in or go out. And I think we saw that a little too much. And I know they were playing zone, so it took them out of that ability. But the pace that Maxi needs to play at is what we saw. In the beginning days of Harden, we saw it in obviously game six, uh, a little bit in games one and two with the Raptors. And so if they can get back to that, I'm not saying they got to run and gun because James Harden just can't do that. He, he, that's just not his style anymore. I don't really know if it ever was. Let's be honest. I mean, he's kind of like a, a, a trotting half court guy, which is great. And it's worked well for him because he's been able to be such a high prolific scorer and shooter. But if you can get just an ounce of that, then you could take the Raptors off their game because then they can't get set up in their defense and they can't set up in that because they run zone all the time and the Sixers are used to at this point. But they run that zone to perfection because it's something that's actually part of their playbook. It's not like something they're junking up their defense like every other team. It's it's a legit part of their game plan. Hey, hey, let me let me pick up on the defense for a minute. You did a good job laying out what you know the Sixers maybe could do here. But do you think? 
at any point are we looking at like a super small lineup where I don't know Niang or Harris are at the five and you're just trying to track meet this thing up a little bit and anything to bring I know there's a real you know consequence is, is getting killed on the boards again mm-hmm. but do you try that at all yeah I mean we were talking in the newsroom you guys know how it is when we're you know watching games there's just so many ideas flying back and forth because you know we've got produ- oh I think I lost you guys no we got you we Uh-oh. got you uh oh. Uh oh. All right. We'll get her straight. We'll get it straight. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going we'll on, it. man. We'll get it. I still think we're trying to catch up from Barrett's question, man, that just threw everything into, into <laughs> a tizzy. No, I but, even uh, stepped back and said, Barrett? Whoa. <laughs> nice. Well, the funny thing is, you don't know, like, oh, she's back. There, there we go. All right. This technology is, is great, isn't it? I know. I I'm technology. right next to the router, by the way. It says, like, move close to the router. I'm like, I'm, I'm standing next to it. But <laughs> it's, it's a great, it's a great. It's a great router. Not a company will not be named, but yes. um, uh, <laughs> we know a company. It we is. know a company it is. Yeah, so yeah. it's literally right now. I'm like kicking it. Yes. But uh, to your point, we were talking about that. Casey Feeney brought it up early on when we saw DeAndre Jordan was starting, whether we like it or not, and <laughs> right. we don't like it. We do not like. No yeah, one likes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I get that he gives you some vertical spacing. That's great. But when you're getting crushed on the rebounds, vertical spacing means nothing. He doesn't yeah. run a good high low he doesn't want to run a good pick and roll he's not dunking at the rim anymore so i'm not really sure what he's doing out there because defensively bam out made him chicken i mean he was yeah, barbecue he chicken yes, he, he ate did. him up so i think running with a faster even if it's gonna cost you on the boards it already did think about it like they were in that game until middle of the fourth quarter probably mm-hmm. you know eight, nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter, right? Mm -hmm. So that's getting crushed on the boards at that point. And you were still in that game. You're still only down eight, nine, 10 points. A couple of threes go in, you know, you're looking at a five, six point game. So I think for them running a small ball lineup, you got to do something different. You really have to change things up. Mm -hmm. And I think having George Niang out there, who is a foul machine, and I get that, but if he can take a couple of fouls, maybe that you get a little bit of momentum going your way. And maybe they can get a couple of stops all right, we, we, we'll, we, got, we, we'll try and get I Amy. Think, back I think there. she stepped on the router. That's right. <laughs> but that's the other thing, guys, that killed them, right? And, and we're all we're going to focus on the on the big boys as we should. But Niang and Danny Green in that game, like, got some okay looks. Niang, zero for seven, zero for seven yep. in twenty two minutes, no points. Danny Green, five points, one of five from three. So combined, those two were one of twelve from three. You're not win- – you have to get somebody else to step up. Harris was – we all talked about how good Harris was. Maxie was, you know, good, not great, but good. Where are these guys? Where are the, the complementary pieces to help at all? The no question is – the question is, is the moment too big for these guys that you're talking about? Um, Ooh. Right. Danny moment. Green's is won three championships, though. Okay, right? okay, yeah, but h- how old is he now? I got. I'm saying he might be out of gas. It's okay. I don't know if the moment's, moment's too big for him. Okay. I'm just I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. You know, the, Toronto's defense was good. Miami's defense is exceptional. Yeah, it is. How much? How much of it is it the guys you were just talking about, or is it Miami style of play that is taking them off their game? And if that's the case, mm-hmm. you know, when you talk about seven game series, it's point counterpoint. Okay, you do something, they do something. How are you going to counter now? So Doc Rivers has to come up with something tonight to free these guys up even more so to get the open looks because we saw it throughout the regular season. There are times when the Sixers are on fire, man, they're knocking down trays left and right. And you got to find a way. You you know what? When you're a three-point shooting team, you look at a team like Golden State. When you're a three-point shooting team, what do they tell you? When you have an off night, you just keep Keep shooting. shooting. You yep. keep shooting. You keep shooting. And that's what the 76ers are going to have to do and hopefully start knocking them down and loosen up some of that Miami defense because Miami's defense is just too strong. Now, I, if Miami's defense is still going to be good when MB gets back on the court, but MB changes the way they attack you as a defense. All right. You, know, I, you can't I, cheat. I think third time's the charm. I think we got her. I think this is <laughs> – I feel very confident we're hey, getting hey, through this clean this time. Stop stepping on a router, please. Come on, Amy. <laughs> I should stop, stop kicking stop, it, I guess. Stop, that's probably stop. not it. Hey, I'm going upstairs. Is he upstairs sabotaging? He, no, is. he doesn't want me to be on Baker. That's yeah. John. Upstairs. Hey, Amy, I'm going to ask you. Amy, I, don't ask you a million dollars. That's who? What? John. 
John, John, John is. Oh, John, John the dog. John yeah. the dog. That's still Who named the dog John? Who played the dog? Shawnee. Who the dog? Shawnee. Or, Shawnee named the dog John. Shawnee. See, see, Amy. Amy's from the Amy's from the South, so I'm not surprised the dog's name is John. <laughs> of course oh, it is. Whoa. I thought it'd be Billy Bob or something like that. You know? Maybe that's his middle. Maybe that's his middle name. You don't know. Hey, oh, seriously though, I want to with, with the time we have. I want to ask you this million dollar question: If the Sixers don't get past this round. Even though right now they have a built-in excuse with Embiid, with the thumb, the orbital bone, does Doc Rivers come back next season if they don't get past this round? Oh, I'm sorry. Is my connection <laughs> bad again? No? Is, it, is, it, is it, oh, I can't see you or hear you. Uh, I mean. You break it up. You break it up. I don't, that must not have come through correctly. Um, what's in that Yeti you got there, friend? Right. So Straight water. Uh, Straight water. Sure it is. Sure it is. Sure it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the built-in excuses are there, but let's be yeah. honest, they, they went yeah. all in, they went all in and, and injuries happen, even the fluky cat, you right. know, catastrophic right. type of injuries, they happen. And then it's, it's a shame and you can blame whoever you want, but it, that's, you know, you, you're out on the court, it's going to happen, whether it's at the first or the second game or the fourth mm -hmm. quarter or the first quarter. But I mean, honestly, I thought for sure that if they didn't get to the Eastern Conference Finals, that they would move on as far as their head coach. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that that's with the built-in excuses, if, if that's how Daryl Morey's going to see it or um, how they want to play this. But the one thing I've learned with a coaching search is that you better have somebody lined up because mm -hmm. you don't want to be yeah. sitting in there in the wind and just being like, oh, and then you're going to, you know, the musical chairs go, the music's off and there's no one, there's no chair left. There's no coach that's available that you would be interested in. And I know everybody's excited about Jay Wright. I mean, he retired and they're like, just bring him right. on. Right. I mean, I don't, I, I could see him eventually coaching in the NBA. I don't know if this would be as, he would go right away to the next year. I mean, that would be a little bit surprising to me. Um, I think he truly does want to step away for a little bit and get his life back um, and enjoy some of the fruits of his labor. But I would be surprised if they didn't move on, but I would all, I wouldn't, I mean, they could. They could just keep Doc and say, listen, we're going to wait another year and see if we can get 100% healthy. But that also means you got to make a decision about James Harden, right? You, you have to make that decision. So do you want to keep – you have to have your ducks in a row before you make such a big commitment monetarily to a guy like James Harden. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your ducks in a row, meaning your front office and your coaching staff, then what are you going to do? And they also need to start thinking about an extension for Tyrese Maxey. So these are things that are going to be coming up on the horizon that Daryl Morey and the front office have to really think about. If they're going to keep Tyrese Maxey, which I think they should, obviously he's such a gem for them and he's going to be on the market and his rookie contract expires next year so they can give him that extension next year. And you're going to build a team around those two, meaning Embiid and Maxey. Is this the coach you want? That's the question the Sixers have to ask themselves. Do they have the coach for those two building blocks? If the answer is yes, then they'll keep Doc Rivers. If the answer is no, we want somebody else, like a Quinn Snyder who could be on the market um, – then you go that route or you go completely off the board or you go with a guy that's already there like Dave Yeager. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I initially I was like, if they don't get to the Eastern Conference Finals, there's no way. Now with the built in Joel and Beats not healthy. Like, right. I don't know. I don't know what they do. Yeah, good mm. stuff, Amy. We appreciate it. Again, check in. So Amy sorry. Oh, uh, no, we're it's good. Okay. Now. We no, love your sporadic comments. Now, this kind of stuff <laughs> won't happen on the pre and post game show. Hey, 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 Amy, did you see it's my wife? Amy, did you see my wife in the chat comment said, hey, Amy, don't call Derek, call me. I'm like, is there <laughs> anybody who's <laughs> in Derek's <laughs> corner? Is there anybody? I think, no. I think the, the answer fish is behind you are you. No. They're in your corner. No, yeah, your fish are. Your little First fish of all, are. I want to know, how does Amy have my wife's number? Barrett, I understand. Don't Barrett, worry Mac about Jordan. it. How does yeah. Amy have my wife's number? Don't you worry about it. You don't need to know Don't you worry about it. That's why I love anybody. you, see? Yes. I, try to, I try to stonewall everybody. Everybody has her number. Uh, there's, How's this your, possible? There, there's, there's that introvert guy. coming out again. Yes. You're just see, a hermit. See, see, it's a yes. big difference. You're a hermit. It's totally I, different. I Amy, you, you are the best. Right here. Thank you, you guys. Thanks. We'll see you guys at 7 o'clock tonight after Thank Barrett's you, show. Yes, Barrett's new show. No. Barrett, what's the name of your show? It's Bird's Huddle. Well, per, no, he didn't now even know. Sponsored by points bet. Thank you. My Birds out. huddle into Sixers pregame with Amy, Mark Jackson. No, we and changed it. They changed it up by points, but powered by points, but I got to say that now. Okay. Okay. Powered Thank you. you say it. Thank you. All right. Powered so, Aim, looking forward to it tonight. We appreciate Amy. Let's get a timeout, guys. Let's everybody catch you. I think we lost Barrett, too, Derek. I don't know what's going on. So, we'll step aside Man. for a second. 
We're going to come back. Shield Kapati, man, the, the great guests just keep coming, baby. Yeah, Shield's man. coming on the other side. We appreciate Amy, Derek Barrett, Rob, Sports Take, Jacob Media, YouTube Network. Stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on action. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Lincoln Financial Field is home to more than just our hometown team. It's a landing place for dreams. Invest in the future of our students from all over Philadelphia and get an exclusive tour of the stadium at the Blocks Aspire to Dreams Gala hosted by Brian Taff of 6ABC. While we aspire to build, our students aspire to dream. Join us for the Blocks Gala on Thursday, May 5th at Lincoln Financial Field. Seats are limited, so reserve yours today at blocks.org slash gala. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits, go for the fans, go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. All right, we're all here, all three of us. You, you know what it comes down to, Rob? Yeah, what, Derek? You and I pay our bills, and some people don't. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there. Barrett, we okay? I'm. I'm. I. I, would, I never went anywhere. Okay. We I was sitting right it. here looking at you guys. We. We could. Well, you kind of froze. So we're you glad froze, we have bro. you back. Yeah. And you yeah. know I was, was just being very still. Okay. <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. You man, you're good. You must have been good at the robot back in the day. When you, when you <laughs> break dancing. That was really good, man. You know who else was a great break dancer from what my sources tell me back in the day? Who was that? The one and only Shield Kapadia <laughs> from the Athletic. You can check out Shield. There he is. Oh, on, yeah, what's on, up? On Twitter, what's going on, Shield man? Kapadia. Shield, were you, were, were, is that true? Were my sources correct? With the I was going to say, I've had a lot of intros in my day. I don't know <laughs> that I've ever been introduced like that. So, no, I can neither deny nor confirm. I'll let that hang out there a little bit. All right. There's, there's a lot of chatter about that. I'm just saying. Oh, I don't know what you know where that stands. Oh, Shield, great off, to have you. Great yeah, to have first, you, man. First off, I want to know, man, yeah. I mean, you know, you've been you've been gone from, from Washington. See, I watched for a long time, man. Do you miss the weed, man? I mean, they say weed is great, man. <laughs> it's everywhere now, Barrett. I can go down, down the street here. I mean, they're, you know, instead of Starbucks, they had Star Buds down the street. So I don't know that it's gotten that far. But, uh, yeah, no, I don't think that's a problem anywhere now. Hey, hey, for the record, 18 states now officially allow rec uh, recreational weed. 18 wow. states. There you wow. go. I saw, you I saw on TV. I saw on uh, TV the other day. 
uh, they just legalized it somewhere. <laughs> you see this cop walk up to this guy and take a puff out of a joint, gave it back to him, and kept on walking. <laughs> Yeah. Shields like, what did I get myself into here? <laughs> right. Break dancing there's weed. No, there's just no trying to break, on this trying show, to break the ice, man. Just trying uh, to break the ice. I like uh, this. No, we don't need to be buttoned up. We don't need to be no, buttoned We can just no. let it fly here. No, no, it's flying. Something's flying. Right. I don't know what. Um, but Shield, let, so let, let's do I, I I mentioned this earlier. Your perspective, I first of all, I, I respect your work and I just love your perspective yeah. because you're here, but you're, you're you obviously have a very close eye on the Eagles, but you also follow this thing from a national level around the NFL. What's the vibe around the league of how the Eagles did this weekend, including the A.J. Brown trade? Yeah, I think they're considered winners pretty much anywhere you look from what they did over draft weekend. I mean, to be able to acquire a 24-year-old wide receiver who really is an all-pro caliber guy when he's healthy, you know, that that I think is a home run move. And then the draft, you know, we, we can obviously get into that. I, I think you can look mm-hmm. at it from a couple of sides with Jordan Davis. You know, should they have taken Kyle Hamilton? Are there concerns about whether Davis is going to uh, affect the passer? But man, when you just look at the ceiling of a guy, like Jordan Davis with that athletic profile and a guy who was a productive college player, you know, that wasn't really viewed by anyone uh, that I've talked to as a stretch at where they took him. Was, was Davis on your board uh, for the Eagles to take when they took him or, or which way would you have gone? Yeah, you know, we, we all have to pick at this time because if we're going to crush yeah. him in two years, we've got to say it now. So uh, I, I was a Kyle Hamilton guy. You know, I thought okay. this was one of the – he was one of the best players uh, in the draft. I understand kind of positional value there, but safety is obviously a need uh, for this football team. And safety is now in the modern NFL what they're asked to do. I mean, you know, I, I would argue that that is a very important position. So uh, I liked Hamilton a lot. You know, I was getting a little puzzled. Why is he still available there? But the Ravens took him at the next pick. And the Ravens, in my opinion, are one of the best run organizations yep. in the NFL. So that made yep. me think, all right, you know, they, uh, that's a really smart team that liked him. So if I'm going on the record, I think it's tough. I could see it either way. If you're telling me, hey, three years from now, Davis is going to be a much better player, that would not shock me. But what I know now, if I've got to decide, I was on the side of taking Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, I was mm. too, man. But, you know, just, just you know, looking at what how he did this, the last two drafts, I think he's starting to listen to a lot more people, you know, and his decision making. I mean, look, you know, he went out and got Pascal for the head coach. You know, um, he got, you know, what they're saying is um, Jalen Hurts' best friend, you know, in Brown. Uh, they listen to Kelsey as far as picking the center Jurgens. I mean, to me, that just it, it, it affirms to me that, you know, this guy is really starting to communicate, open up his repertoire because those guys in his toolbox are, are, are really giving them valuable information i think it helped him in this draft making process man um i mean the maturity of howie from from when i first met him to where he is now i think is you know above and beyond what it used to be you know what is your sense of how how he is yeah, I, I think it goes in cycles, honestly. You know, I, I think when he came back after the whole Chip Kelly thing, I think there were people in the organization that said, hey, this is a different this is a different guy this time around. Now, by the end of the Doug Peterson era, there were people who were, you know, telling me, nope, you know, ha- Howie is the same Howie he's always been. And so, you know, there are ups and downs. Now, uh, I, will, I will agree with what you're saying that I do think the last two years here, now the Wentz thing didn't uh, work out, but from the point where they said, we've got to trade Wentz until now, I do think he's done a good job i mean they've done Mm. a good job the last two years sometimes you see a team rebuild and it's two three years where they're winning four five six Mm. games and it takes forever some of these rebuilds in the nfl and uh so i I think uh they're in the right direction i agree with a lot of the moves they've made here over the last two years but i'm also hesitant to say uh oh yeah you know everything's good we're not going to hear any drama out of the novacare complex just because it has been a long (laughs) run where you haven't had long stretches where it's been like oh yeah everything's going great here everyone's aligned here more often than not there have been issues with uh you know kind of the power structure the politics inside the building so i'm not ready to sweep all those under the rug uh, just yet Mm. well let me ask you shield Uh, there's some potential moves coming front office wise andy weidel may end up going to pittsburgh there's a lot of chatter about that interesting move that his brother casey is now out as the scouting director now is that just portend to a move that he's going with his brother which wouldn't be a shocker Or is there something else there? Because if Weidel doesn't get the Pittsburgh job, that's a little awkward, no? Uh, I I would think so. Yeah, I'll tell you what. If you fired my brother, I'm not coming on to do this video (laughs) with you. (laughs) Let alone, let alone, you know, 
<laughs> keep working in the same building. So I would say awkward <laughs> might be another statement there. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, that that's how I kind of read it. Yeah, I, don't, I, I think it sort of feels like there's going to be, you know, maybe Andy Weidel moves on. Maybe it's Pittsburgh. Maybe it's somewhere else. And then you kind of have to hire his replacement. And you can tell that person, hey, you know, we've got a lot of open spots here. You can hire your people. This is an attractive uh, job. So, you know, a lot of these guys were kind of carried over from the Joe Douglas era when Joe Douglas was here, including uh, Andy Weidel. And so Douglas has been gone, but they kind of just slid Weidel into that position. Now, if Weidel's gone, they might say, you know what? Uh, you've got kind of a faction there that are Howie's guys who have been there through different regimes, they're going to remain. But these guys who might have been more on the Weidel, Joe Douglas side, mm -hmm. you know, they might say, hey, we would like to move on with some of the guys we know in the NFL. And the Eagles might say, well, yeah, you can go ahead because we're going to bring someone new in um, and we're going to let them hire their people. So that's kind of my read on it. Now we'll see mm -hmm. here. I could be totally wrong in the next uh, two, three weeks or, or months. We'll see what happens. But, but that's kind of how I view it um, based on what we've seen here in the last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Sheila, as you see it right now, is Dallas still the team in the NFC East? They've lost some key personnel, Lyle Collins, Amari Cooper, and a few others. Are they still just slightly ahead of the Eagles right now? Uh, I think they are, but uh, I also think the Cowboys have had an underrated bad offseason. I mean, you you mentioned mm -hmm. it there. They've yeah. lost some key pieces. You know, they trade Amari Cooper, which you can say that's that's fine. He was making a lot of money. You know, you can sort of understand that. But then I was waiting for the other shooter drop. Well, how are they going to replace him? And they really didn't do a great job of replacing him. I mean, they yeah. brought back Michael Gallup, the wide receiver. He tore his ACL in, what, December? I mean, you mm -hmm. don't know what you're getting mm -hmm. from that guy in the first six, eight weeks of the season. And so their wide receiving core is not anywhere near where it was with Amari Cooper there. You mentioned they lost Lyle Collins as a starting offensive lineman. The guy they drafted in the first round, you know, a lot of smart people are saying this guy could eventually, uh, I think Tyler Smith, uh, could eventually be a really good player, this left mm -hmm. tackle from Tulsa, this offensive lineman. But he's sort of like a work in progress type of yeah, guy. Wrong. From the people, wrong. Uh, wrong. Penalty exactly. machine. He's a penalty exactly. machine. So, yeah. uh, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, tw if we're just looking at 2022, like that could be a weak spot for them as well. Randy Gregory, they had the drama with him where they thought they signed him. He didn't mm -hmm. like a little clause in the contract. He signs with the Broncos. I mean, he was a very good pass rusher for them uh, as well. And then hanging over that whole Dallas situation is Sean Payton. Sean yep. Payton's out there. Yep. He's been the apple of Jerry. I mean, what was it? Six years in a row. The rumor is Sean Payton going to Dallas. Right. And now yep. Sean Payton's actually available. And so if you're looking at Mike McCarthy saying he hasn't done, you know, no one would say he's done a great job. And now you're going into kind of this high pressure year where if it doesn't work out for Mike McCarthy. I mean, we all know that it feels like Jerry's going to be calling Sean Payton in November, December, if that thing's not working out. So uh, yeah, if I'm just looking at it talent wise, Dallas is still a good team. I think they've still got the best quarterback but i do think that you know gap has kind of shrunk a little bit and they're kind of a high variance team where if that thing went off the rails this year that wouldn't shock me either mm. well you need to talk about dallas's coaching staff you look at our coaching staff they don't they've got one year under their belt just one year uh what would you grade you know looking at nick sirianni's rest of his coaching staff man i, I would give sirianni a minus. I mean, I, I thought he did a great job last year. I was very skeptical. Uh, I'll be honest to that move. I'm going, it doesn't look like they thought this thing all the way out. I was hearing rumors, <laughs> other guys right. they're targeting. Then those guys are, you know, going elsewhere. And listen, luck plays a part in this. We all know Doug Peterson was not their uh, first choice when they hired him. Doug Peterson comes in and they win a Super Bowl, it's sort of, I'm not going to say Sirianni's at that level because he's only had one year, but it feels like they kind of lucked into something that could be working out well. You know, I don't know what the Eagles were doing in the first six, seven weeks of last season with the offense they were <laughs> using with the personnel at hand. I'm going, this looks like it could set up to be a disaster. But all of a sudden, after that Raiders game, uh, the sw switch flipped there, and it's hard. It's hard to change your offense that dramatically. You almost never see that in the NFL midseason yep. to change your offense that dramatically and have success. So that speaks to you know them not being stubborn and them not saying we're just going to do what we're doing the entire time. They changed. They adapted to their personnel. It seems like he connects with his players uh, really well. You know, he's obviously got a positive, enthusiastic demeanor about him. So uh, we'll see. It's one year. You know, they're Matt Nagy in, in Chicago after one year. I think he won coach of the year uh, his first year there. And then we saw it didn't last. So I don't want to read too much into it. But if we're saying, you know, how do we feel about it after one year? Uh, I would be encouraged with what you saw from Sirianni. Mm. Sheila, let, let me ask you what A.J. Brown, that addition, does to this offense and how that, that can kind of change the dynamic of a team that was so run-oriented, right? And they had to do what they had to do. But how does this kind of shift the, the paradigm here? 
I mean, I, I sort of feel like Eagles fans don't understand the full value of this guy. I mean, he is a beast. He has like a playing personality where if you go, you know, we've all been at Eagles games, right? Where they have two, three, three and outs in the first half. Everyone's booing. You're getting ready to say, what is this team doing? They're a disaster. And sometimes it lasts. Sometimes it doesn't. A.J. Brown is the type of player that you have that second three and out. Everyone's booing. You come out on the next series, throw him a little slant. Throw him a little screen. He stiff arms one guy. He breaks another tackle, and you have a 40 or 50 yard gain. I mean, he is a game changer in that respect. And just like a physical receiver that they really haven't had since TO. I'm not saying he he's TO, but that type of guy where just like uh, I think Sirianni said the the get off the bus guy, right? Where you're just watching him in warm ups before that jersey comes on, going, All right, that guy's gonna be a problem. Opposing <laughs> offensive coordinators are looking at it on Tuesday. We got a game plan for the Eagles. Shoot, we gotta have a plan for AJ Brown. And I really thought they lacked those type of players. Don't, don't yep. get me wrong. Devonte Smith looks like he's going to be a great player. Dallas Goddard, very good player, but who's that guy who on Tuesday of a game week, the opposing defensive coordinator, man, he he's staying up at night or he's having an extra meeting going, we need a plan for player X. AJ Brown is that type of guy. So uh, they're going to have to figure out the run pass balance mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, I still think they're a run first offense, but I do think this just helps your quarterback so much when you can say, I don't have to be Superman and go through three reads. I can, you know, we can just set something up, slant, screen, and get the ball in his hands early, get the crowd into it. He really is that type of player. Hey, what Shield, when you look at this Eagles defensive front seven now with the additions of Hassan Reddick, Kazir White, Nicobe Dean, Brandon Graham coming back off the Achilles. Uh, they re-signed Derek Barnett for a couple of more years. When If Jonathan Gannon changes his philosophy and just unleashes the hounds, how much could that front seven hide the deficiencies that could be a problem on the back end? Yeah, we, we've got to see that from Gannon. I mean, as much as I just talked up Sirianni, I was very underwhelmed with, with Gannon last year. And right. listen, I know he's got a lot of respect around the league. I know we interviewed for head coaching jobs. People seem to legitimately like this guy and think he's got a, a great head on his shoulders and can be a great coach. But I didn't see it last year. I mean, I was watching a passive defense that lacked aggressiveness, that had safeties playing 25 mm -hmm. yards off the line of scrimmage, that had, like you mentioned, defensive linemen not firing off the ball doing what they want to do and so now you look at it with those moves you just mentioned I mean you could make an argument that their second team D line is better than a lot of teams first team D line I mean they're they're going eight deep there uh on the defensive line and so uh you combine that with the linebackers who at least have some potential you feel better about it than you did in previous years and I I need to see Jonathan Gannon adapt this scheme to the personnel yeah. like you just mentioned and yeah you're right I mean you know could we we've all heard coaches talk about it they don't have a shutdown secondary they have one good corner they have a good slot corner Devontae Maddox and then you have questions kind of in, in the other three spots so that defensive line is going to have to dominate games but uh you know i think they did a good job upgrading that group to to at least allow gannon to be able to do that a little bit uh, you, you bring up the linebacker shield so let, let's piggyback off of that for a minute nicobe dean ends up falling to them and to much surprise from a lot of folks we didn't hear a lot of the medical stuff that was later on leaked uh, about him going in. I don't know if you had heard anything going into this thing, but he lasts all the way until 83, whatever it was, where the Eagles grabbed him. How surprised were you? And, you know, there is a risk there. The peck, the knee, we hear things. He's not as tall as some people would like, whatever. But for the best defense in college football, you ask any coach there, he say this is the best player on our defense. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I was very surprised. It seems like every year there are those one or two guys where you say, wait a minute, why is this guy still available? And I, I think it's important to ask that question because let's be honest, 82 times this guy got passed over. And, and we all watched Georgia going, you know, how would this guy get passed over 82 exactly. times in the draft? So you do have to certainly keep that in mind, uh, whether it's the medical stuff, whether it's he didn't do any athletic testing uh, before the draft. So if teams were thinking, you know what, he doesn't look like, uh, you know, the greatest athlete uh, out there, even though he's been a great player, we would like to get some of those numbers. You weren't able to get those numbers. He's 5'11", 229, a little undersized, so maybe not every scheme is going to say we want this guy. So I think you add all those things up, and, and we'll see. I mean, the medical one is the big one. We'll see if that ends up being a factor um, for him. But man, to me, at 83, third round, no brainer, you know, for a team that's been starving for linebackers, and now get a guy in here who 
Honestly, if he's an average starting linebacker with all the intangibles he brings, that's a win in the third round. I mean, the third round, you're usually yeah, not it's finding. It's an upgrade. Mm -hmm. It's an upgrade. I mean, it's an upgrade. If he's just like that alpha who's getting everyone set up before the snap and being that kind of, a, you know, that emotion, that energy, that leadership that you need, and then his play is average, huge upgrade from what they mm -hmm. had last year. And then you do have that upside. I mean, like you mentioned, that Georgia defense, best one we've seen in college football in what, 10 years, 20 mm -hmm. years, our lifetime. I mean, you can make all those arguments. And this was the guy. I mean, this was the guy at the heart of that defense. So I think his personality, I think Eagles fans are just going to fall in love uh, with this guy. I'm just hoping he can stay healthy so that you can see all that other stuff that he does uh, on the field in addition to those intangibles. Mm. All right. You know, I, I want to flip it back over to the other side of the ball. Um, everybody's talking about Jalen Hurts. His arm's not strong. You know, he can't read. I, I, I think this is going to be one of those proven years for him. Not not proven year to the Eagles, but proven everybody that he is a better player than where everybody's giving you know credit for. I do think that you can go out. You can you can become a better reader of defenses just by the reps and seeing different things. I believe you could become a better technician to get your throws out on time because you know you you, you learn how to do that. All these things can be coached into you. I, I'm, I'm really getting tired of people saying that he's not going to be a good quarterback because he didn't have a good year last year. No, you learn every year. He played four four games his, his, his rookie year. So last year was really his step in his indoctrination into the NFL as a starter. Now mm -hmm. you're going to get that big leap going into the next year. I, I, I think he is going to show everybody, yes, he can play. You know what I'm saying? But what is your sense of what you think um, – Jalen Hurts is. Yeah, I think he's got a chance. I mean, when you see the moves they made, uh, it's exciting because – Hertz is in position to succeed now, you know, like, like that offense, is, I think is going to be a top five offensive line in the NFL. They've got depth. They can withstand some injuries up front. And then AJ Brown, Devonte Smith and Dallas Goddard. Like I haven't gone through every NFL team, but man, that, that is a good group, especially complement each other for what they want to do. So I think what you're saying is fair, Barry, you know, there, there were times last year, like some of those throws on go balls down the sideline where you know, it's a combination of he doesn't have the strongest arm, but the timing's off. And so one of those things has to change. And the thing that you mentioned is if the ball comes out a little bit earlier on those, then you don't have to have the strongest arm and the timing, you can work on that. And so uh, he really does have a chance. Uh, I think he's in position to succeed. I think from an Eagles perspective, they're looking at this going, all right, we put the pieces in place. Go ahead and show us what you can do here in 2022. If he plays great and his lights out and, you know, they win a playoff game, they're in a great situation. You build on that going forward. He's on a rookie contract. Having said that, I do think they're looking at this going, if we don't see that growth, if we don't see that ceiling, if we don't have that upside, there's a reason we made that trade with the Saints. There's a reason why we made that trade for A.J. Brown because now all of a sudden this offseason, you know, they didn't get Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson. I don't think that was because the Eagles didn't want Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson. And so now you, you look at it next off season, uh, they have some draft capital to work with. They've got a good, you know, they look like a kind of an attractive destination to quarterback. So it could go one way or, or the other. I have no issue with the process saying let's give Hertz another year and see what he can do. I think that's totally fair. I think they love his intangibles. I think they feel like whatever his ceiling is, he's going to reach that ceiling because of how hard he works and how badly he wants it. I do think they have probably some questions about, you know, just kind of the raw talent, uh, the raw ceiling for him as a, as a, passer how much he can improve there so we'll see hey she you you cover so much of the nfl and i know you're based locally how much of the eagles do you actually get to cover now i mean i mean there was a time yeah. when the eagles were primarily your beat but right. see, then, then all of a sudden you blew up and became big time <laughs> and forgot all those little people and just, <laughs> just you derek just you just yeah. Yeah, just, just, so, yeah. so how much of the eagles do you actually get to cover now yeah, so I don't go down to all the press conferences yep. and that stuff. I, I watch every game uh, on film every week. We have our Birds with Friends podcast with Bo Wolf and Zach Berman. So I watch the film uh, every week there. I do go down to some uh, training camp practices there. You know, at the owners' meetings, I'll stop in uh, on their press conference, try to talk to some people in the organization. So, yeah, it's not a full-time thing, but you know how it is living here. I mean, you walk down the street, the neighbors want to know what you thought of the A.J. Brown yep. trade. So I can't yep. look stupid just to the people <laughs> yep. uh, down the street here. So, if we have nothing else, I got I to gotta keep my hand on what the Eagles are doing. Uh, uh, last one for me, Sheil. Uh, Cam Jurgens. there's some debate whether or not he may see some time at guard, if he could push for that job, or this is just kind of, you know, knock on wood, if Kelsey stays healthy, a red shirt 
essentially for him, an apprenticeship, if you will. How do you see that with the second rounder, the second round of Nebraska? Yeah, Jurgens was a tough one for me because I think he's a very good prospect. I mean, I don't want to say anyone's Jason Kelsey, but, you know, people you talk to do say he's like a mini Jason Kelsey with his athleticism and the way he played at center. Having said that, you know, Kelsey's going to play this year. So if he doesn't get injured and you're not playing Jurgens at guard, you're wasting one out of four years with this rookie. Now, even if Kelsey thinks right now it's my last year, I'm going to retire we know how it goes. I mean, it's hard. You know, you change your mind. If Kelsey plays like an all pro and they have a great year, is he going to say at the end of the year? Yeah, I'm sticking to that. And so I think they have to have some kind of plan. I I would like to see Mm -hmm. if they feel like he's big enough, versatile Mm -hmm. enough to play guard. If he is, then that pick makes a lot of sense to me, but I do wonder if this was just a Kelsey replacement plan, then I'm wondering if that was the right move. Because you're talking about maybe wasting one or two years on a guy's uh, rookie contract, Mm -hmm. which those are only four years. Mm -hmm. I lied. Can I ask you one more, Sheila? Yeah. I, all right. Well, he I, always lies, Sheila. I, I'm a liar. That's what I do. Um, I thought the Jets, as crazy as that sounds, of any team had the best draft in, in football. Where, where would you write? Just give me a couple that really stood out to you that you really liked. If you want to throw one in there that you it was just puzzling to you too, whatever. Who did you like? I love the Ravens draft. Uh, you know, yeah. not not to, to keep talking them up, but man, Kyle Hamilton, uh, Travis Jones, the mm-hmm. uh, the kid from Michigan, Ajabo, the defensive end. I mean, they just had pick after pick where I'm going, this organization knows what it's doing. And they also draft for volume. So they go into it thinking we're not smarter than everyone else. We're not going to nail every pick. Let's make sure we have 11 picks going in. We miss on some people. That's okay. We're going to have good players here. So I did uh, love their draft. I mean, if you're a Jets fan, you have to be excited about their draft now i don't know if the quarterback could play there we'll see it was only a rookie year i'm not going to count him out but the funny part about the jets is if zach wilson can't play like nothing else really matters for them they're gonna stink again no matter how else you surround him with so those were a couple that were good uh the saints i I think the saints are delusional right now you know if you're asking for one bad one (laughs) yeah sean payton's not walking through that door no breeze isn't walking through that door and you're still operating like you have a one or two year super bowl window here i mean i don't get you know part of me admires it because i don't like all the tanking and play for three years down the road so i admire it in that respect but man i just don't see that team as a team like their ceiling to me is maybe you go nine and eight and losing the first round of the playoffs so the way they're giving away future assets and acting like they're one player away uh i sort of think they're going to be in a root in for a rude awakening here hey, hey Sheila, i think the most fun division to watch this coming season will be that afc west Ooh. when you look at the gunslingers in that Ooh, division man. now i can't wait to see i to be honest with you, I know I know the Chiefs are considered the creme de la creme because of Patrick Mahomes, but now you got Russell Wilson in that division, Derek Carr in that division, the young quarterback of the Chargers. I honestly don't know who's going to win that division because not only is it loaded with quarterbacks, but all of those teams have restocked with veteran talent now. Oh my, it's going to be, I mean, Herbert might be my favorite guy in the league. Oh my goodness. I mean, just the physical talent that he plays with and the throws he's willing to make are unbelievable. So yeah, I need all those teams on national television. The chiefs are interesting. Andy's going to kind of, this is version kind of version 2.0 with Patrick Mahomes, you know, version one was Tyreek yep. Kelsey. Let's go compete. And now I think they said, all right, now we got to get ready. We, we've got Mahomes for another eight, nine years. Mm-hmm. Let's figure out what the next version of it's going to look like. So do they take a little bit of a step? back you know and try to build it for the long term or you know i'm hesitant to say that because you still got mahomes there i'm like i'm not you know i'm not gonna be picking against this team next year with mahomes and andy Reid. so they're gonna be right there russell wilson is on kind of this crusade to say the seahawks did not believe in my talent they didn't put the ball in my hands i'm gonna show you here in the second phase of my career that i'm you know they're gonna let russ cook and i'm gonna be throwing it 40 times a game and breaking all these records so you've got that and then the raiders are a team i thought they might come in and do a big rebuild uh, you know, th- this offseason and say, all right, let's, we've got a new regime. They didn't do that. They said, let's go win right now. We keep Derek Carr. We trade for Devontae Adams. So, yeah, uh, all those games should be on national TV. They don't need to put any other division on Sunday night, Monday night, or Thursday night. Just let us watch uh, all those division games because those are going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fast wow. forward to September wow. right now, man. Can't yeah, man. <laughs> Shield, always good catching up with you, man. And again, uh, check out Shield on Twitter at Shield Capadia, writes Appreciate for the it. Athletic. Thank you, bro. Of course, his podcast, Birds with Friends with Bo Wolf and, uh, and our buddy Zach Berman. We appreciate it, Shield. Great stuff, man. Thank you. It's great talking to you guys. All right, All right brother. Bro. Take care. That's, that's hey, Shield Capadia. Good hey, stuff. Hey, Rob, Rob yeah, before go you go to break, man, I must respond to one of our Uh-oh. commenters, uh, Kevin Savard. While we were talking to Shield, you know, I was looking down at my phone periodically and not being rude because I love Shield to death. 
and uh, Kevin goes, "Hey, uh, Gunner, um, were you concentrating or were you snoozing?" Oh, but see, people who know me know I'm working the phones and the computer all the time. So I am here right now to confirm that tomorrow at two thirty, <laughs> we will have Chris Long on this show. Oh yeah, my yeah, bad. Chris Long there we tomorrow go. at two thirty. So yes. You know, Kevin and anybody else out there wondering, when I look down what I'm doing, I'm responding to people uh, who are watching the show, people we could get on the show. So I'm working it, man. I'm like I'm like the DJ with, like, multiple turntables, man. You know what I'm saying? So, and, oh, and, and, and also, huh. you know, um, they're talking about, you know, oh, they just don't know. Because like, they're talking about uh, Britton Covey, a uh, receiver from Utah. Yeah. The reason why I'm not talking about him because he's no need to talk about. It. He's five right. foot eight, 160 right. pounds. Right. Will he be on the roster? He'll be on the. He'll be on the. Not the. He'll be. He'll be on the on the scout team. He'll be on. A, he'll be a guy that's gonna come in. He's not gonna do anything during this season. He had he's an unbelievable rose ball for people who didn't see it. He he was yeah. he's he's yeah, a good so, returner. He's yeah. tiny, but he's a real good returner, man. He, he's, he, he's, but okay. we have real good returners already. I mean, I doubt seriously he dethrones even Boston Scott. So yes, I do know about who we have on the roster. I have researched him. I just didn't feel like talking about him because he's nobody to talk about. Okay. All right. So you got right, it. You B got Brooks. it there. You got it. Stand your you ground, B Brooks. Hey, B, right. B, B who I know who you are, man. <laughs> right. You know, don't question what I know. I mean, do you know? You know do you know? Okay. Do you really know? You know? Okay. All right. So, Looking forward to hey, that. Hey, Chris Long should be phenomenal tomorrow, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get, 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 the, get the bleep button ready. Get the bleep yeah. button ready. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to. We can say whatever we want, man. We can say whatever we want. It's no, you fun. can't. I can't because I, oh. have, I got somebody I got to answer to when I get okay. off the show. All right. All right. Yeah, well, me, maybe we'll try and get Derek in some trouble tomorrow. That should be fun. All right. Yeah. That's one thing you cannot do. Well, we'll see, see, Trish might throw holy water on me, so I know I can't go and be too bad. Barry, so. Barry just <laughs> melt when that holy water yeah, hits I, you. Yeah, I, I want to see your skin burn. <laughs> yeah, that water hit you. Barry will look like me in a day in the beach. <laughs> All right, let's get a uh, timeout. We'll come back. We'll keep rolling with some football. We will get back to the Sixers, certainly. We'll, we'll talk about the Phillies. There's a lot of other like weird stories in sports that we're going to delve into and in, 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 in pop culture as well don't go anywhere sports take yeah. d gun barrett brooks i am rob ellis jacob media youtube network and let me tell you about my good friends at pro action restoration you got a home you got a business you've experienced that pain and inconvenience of water of fire of smoke mold damage whatever the case may be to your property or building you know how trying that can be pro action is on call 24 7 you can reach out to them at any time they get there quickly their experience. They've dealt with water damage. I had to deal with it at my parents' house. It can be a nightmare. They're the people you want to turn to to get it done right. They will clean it up. The crew is professional and the price is very reasonable. They're licensed, bonded, and fully insured. They're serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. Pro action will work in conjunction with your insurance company, whether it's water, fire, smoke damage, mold remediation, you name it, they can handle it. Give them a call, 610-623-37- Six zero or email them at proactionrestoration.com. Stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV. Now you can watch 6ABC 24 7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on X. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. 
Lincoln Financial Field is home to more than just our hometown team. It's a landing place for dreams. Invest in the future of our students from all over Philadelphia and get an exclusive tour of the stadium at the Block's Aspire to Dreams Gala, hosted by Brian Taff of 6ABC. While we aspire to build, our students aspire to dream. Join us for the Block's Gala on Thursday, May 5th at Lincoln Financial Field. Seats are limited, so reserve yours today at blocks.org slash gala. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. All right. Happy Wednesday. I, I, I'll, I'll give in. May the May the fourth be with you. See, I did a little Star Wars thing right there. Wow. Well, but it didn't come from the heart. It See, that's the problem. That no, didn't. See. You're right. It was. It was. It was phony. I apologize. Thank I can't you. get. I can't get over that. You don't. You don't watch Star Wars. That's, it's just that, not my thing, man. I don't hate a, it. I don't. I don't. I don't badmouth people for doing it. It's just. I just. Eh. It doesn't. It's, do a, it. it's a fifteen yard penalty, dude. Seriously. I mean, it, <laughs> personal foul. That's a personal foul, man. All right. I mean, Look, I don't, I don't know if I can look at you the same way anymore. I know. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry I disappointed you, Derek. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take, Jacob Media, YouTube Network. Smash that like button. Tell your friends. Let's get everybody involved here because we're bringing it each and every day. Chris Long will be joining us tomorrow at 2.30 in addition to some of our other guests. All right, so staying on the Eagles thing. And I, I asked Sheila about this, but I want to get both of your takes on this as well. So – I think we're sort of assuming, but there's no lock here that, that Andy Weil, who is the Eagles director of player personnel, how he's kind of right-hand man is going to be leaving and going to Pittsburgh. Once uh, Kevin Colbert retires, makes it official. We know he's retiring, but once he finally officially steps away, but not a lock, his brother, Casey is the director of scouting and he was let go by the organization. I, right. Yeah. That that, means it's it's, it's got to mean that he's, Going. Leaving in advance to to go join his brother there? Would you think? If not, that's a weird work dynamic. It is. I mean, it, it, it's, it's putting things in, putting things in motion. Um, that Andy Waddle's not going to be there. That's that's what it is. You know, because I mean, he, his brother's you know somebody he's like a confidant. You know, he's he's helping him along the way. So, I mean, it's almost the the writing's on the wall. I guess you'll say. You know what I'm saying? But also, um, I'm, I'm back to this. Uh, Randall, the handle. Randy, I didn't say that you don't know shit. I said that the kid will probably be on a practice squad. He's he's five eight, five nine, 170 pounds soaking wet. Just being real. He plays receiver. So that means if he's gonna be on a rock, he's gonna take a roster spot. Which one of these receivers is he gonna uh, dethrone? I mean He's not going to – Jalen Rager has a better chance of making the squad than he does because he plays wide receiver. Look at the starting wide receivers they have right now. He's, he doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell on being on the roster. That's just that's just simple mathematics on looking at a roster, understanding what a roster is, and what else does he do. He's just not going to be on the squad to be a returner. He's just not going to do that. They're not going to do that. So I'm, I'm sorry. You got other guys on the team that can do the same thing. What's the running back we just got last year from uh from Memphis? Uh, uh, Gainwell. Gainwell. Kenneth yeah. Gainwell's probably going to take more of the responsibilities of being a returner more so than this kid. So don't act like I don't know. I never said that you didn't know, but I do know what I'm talking about. That's all I'm saying. All right, all right, Ooh. fair enough. Yeah, and yeah. look, I think that's an area that the team. I, I'm talking return game. They got they got to yeah. improve. I mean, I, I know yeah, they were yeah. st they were still in force feed 
Rager mode, which I think they've moved on from that. I, I, I'm, I'm can confidently say that. But yeah, I mean Boston Scott certainly uh, would would be an option there. I, punt, Scott. Yep. Yeah, punts right now are a little sketchy for me. I don't know Very exactly sketchy. what that's going to look like. Yeah, you know that's a little concerning. Yeah, for for a lot of the time they had um they had uh what's his name Greg Ward Jr. doing it just because which he's solid. I mean he's usually yeah. good hands, but he's not going to he's not explosive. Mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't want to see game about game well back there on a the return game. You know, I like him as a as a versatile running back, but I want somebody with, with who can blaze. You look at most teams that have good return games. They have guys back there. If they if they find a seam, it's lights out. You're not catching them from behind. Gainwell doesn't have that kind of speed. He's a sure-handed player. I like what he does in the offense, but I think compared to some of these returners we watch in the game, he's more of a Clydesdale than a thoroughbred. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and you know they got that kid. Slow. Mm-hmm. But you know, remember they got the kid from Oregon, the the, the Olympian. The, the, oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my god! Way, that's what it, oh, did you see returner. what he did at the Penn Relays? Yes, this dude oh, is yes. ridiculous. Okay, I, I mean, look, oh, I, he's god. been off for he hasn't played football in like five years, so right. I don't know what that's going to look like. One thing we know is he can run. I mean, this guy is unreal, and he was kill. He was blowing it up at the Penn Relays, and that's the yeah, best but, of the best. So, but see, people, you you gotta look out. You gotta look at. When you when you look at what people bring to the table, you not only got to think about their skill set, but you also got to think about where they fit in on a roster. Usually, a team keeps five wide receivers. Um, at the most, they'll keep six if you're a phenomenal player. And you mm-hmm. look at the receivers; they got Devontae Smith as one, Pascal's two. They've got AJ Brown three. Um, Jalen Rager will be on the team. Quez. Quez Watkins of the yeah. four. So that's five. That's five yeah. guys right there. And that's not yeah. mentioning Hightower or Greg Ward. Exactly. Hightower, Greg Ward. Um, I mean, so it's, it's just tough. You know, no matter what a player can do, it's not always um, the talent level it has a lot to do where they fit in as far as the team. They're going to carry more linebackers this year on the roster because they put some they put some capital in that in that um, position. So they'll probably carry five linebackers. They usually only carry four. They'll probably carry five or six of them simply because mm-hmm. they put them. They put some money in the position. You know, they got drafted guys because they're not going to put Nicole, Nicole Dean on the uh, practice squad, but somebody will snatch him up. Right. So, you know, you you got um, K. Ron Johnson. They just signed him from Kansas. They just drafted him from Kansas. Um, you know, you got Hassan Reddick. You got T.J. Edwards. Mm-hmm. Edwards mm-hmm. You know, and, and Davion Taylor. He's right. going to be on the squad. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily if a guy belongs on there, if he should make the team. It has a lot to do with other positions on the team um, that you have to, you know, account for also in that 53-man roster. I mean, mm-hmm. it's 53 men. It's not a lot of people on the team. That's why the more you can do, the better mm-hmm. chance you have of being on the squad because they're not just going to keep a, a left tackle that's just a left tackle. Well, I Unless mean, you're I, Dillard. I, right, and that's why even I don't think – I think this could be it for him, but Ortega Whiteside's doing the right thing going to tight end. Yeah, no prayer at receiver. Absolutely, at, at making this team now. Absolutely, you know, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think Whiteside had a choice in this decision. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was voluntary. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was basically, hey, you're playing tight end, like it or not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but I still think yeah. it's actually better for him in the long run. If yeah, I agree. Not, you know, he's going to have to bulk up a little bit, and and hopefully his attributes. It, it tight ends suit him a lot better as a professional football player than they did at wide receiver. You know, he's going to have to put maybe 10 pounds on his frame. Mm-hmm. If he's that accomplished of a blocker from the wide receiving position and, and you know, Nick Sirianni raved about him blocking, um, then he, that it should be a natural transition uh, moving to the tight end because the tight ends do a lot of blocking in Nick Sirianni's offense. Mm-hmm. Can he catch the ball any better as a tight end? Can yeah. he get separation any better? Yeah, run better routes. That remains to be seen, bro. Yeah. He's gonna be trying to block defensive ends, linebackers. Yeah. It's not like he was doing the wide receiver positions. Like he's gonna come in and, and wall a guy off. You got to come off with some force, come off the line of scrimmage, and hit somebody and drive somebody. Yeah, you're in the it's trenches. A lot different. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot yeah. different. You at the tight end position. I oh, appreciate that, forty boy Lou. Appreciate that. And yeah, we need we need a new secondary man. But it's gonna be tough, man. Um, free agency. I'm. I'm I'm gonna start looking at uh, free agency. That free agency list of, of, of corners. There's and some names. I mean, there's some guys who are probably I, on the back I, end of their prime. It's not yes. great, but right. it's better than what you have right now. I'm, That's I'm telling sure. you. I'm telling you. Knowing Howie, like I know Howie, they're gonna sit back. They're gonna grab one of these veterans, 
hey, it's gonna, you're going to have another Steve Nelson in here yes. to play opposite Darius Slay. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. There's nothing so wrong think, with that. You know? So you think they'll go corner or do you think they'll bring in the fridge and safety? I think I, I think I, safety I think is the, the more pressing need. What I agree say? with you. I agree with you. I think I think safety is the more pressing need uh, for this team. I don't like the cornerback situation. I know they have some young guys there. They want to give some playing time too. But yeah. if I'm if I'm an offensive coordinator, I'm unfortunately I'm throwing whoever's playing opposite Darius Slay. If he's not a proven veteran, I'm testing him time and time again. And unfortunately, if he's tested enough, it could cost him a job in the National Football League. He could get exposed at a young, tender age, and it could shatter his confidence. Um, you know, it's like pick your poison. Do you get the cornerback and neglect the safety? Do you get the safety and neglect the cornerback position? Right. You know, it's, you got to pick your poison. You can't pay everybody, and you have to get young players on the field to develop to find out if they are a part of your future beyond 2022. If well, let me not, ask you guys this then. Huh? Let me ask you, let me pose this to you then. Do you think there's any opportunity that I'm taking Avante Maddox and moving him out and have one of those young guys come in and play in the slot? Well, I'd rather, I'd rather keep him there, Barrett. Personally, I'd rather yeah. keep him in the slot. But go ahead, Derek. They, they've played Maddox on the outside in the past, and mm -hmm. I love his tenacity. He's fearless. He can run with most receivers in a game. He does get sucked in a little too much on a double move. But a, corner, a lot of cornerbacks get sucked in. His mm -hmm. biggest deficiency is his height. You know, most of the receivers he's playing against, 6'1", 6'2", 6'4", you know, and it showed at times. You know, look at some of the 50-50 balls – you know, when they threw them to receivers, those receivers are going to win the majority of those because, you know, at five, eight, five, nine, you just physically can't get up there. Unless you got a 95 inch vertical, vertical leap, you're not going to be able to get up there with the Mike Evans and the receivers like that. That's a mismatch, in, you know, made in heaven for, for an offensive coordinator. And these receivers are getting taller and bigger and faster and more athletic and versatile and physical every day. Right. And Avante Mattis can play on my football team any day of the week because of his smarts tenacity yep. he, he's a sure tackler but his height is definitely a disadvantage of trying to put him out there on the island you know for every snap of a ball game I don't want to hurt myself in two spots and I think taking right, him right. out of the slot where he got really comfortable last year and I thought was good mm -hmm. hurt you and then you're going to run into the same issues you had when like you just laid out Derek when he was on the outside when, when they were just trying right, anything right, at that right. point I, I Barrett, I'd rather keep him there. I agree with you. They don't have enough, and there's not a compliment to Slay right now. Right, but I, right, I, I don't right. think that's that's quite the move. I would just keep him where he is. Well, I'm just saying, you know, don't be surprised if they do that. I mean, I, I mean, they did did it last year. No, I, I'm uh, not. Yeah, year before, I wouldn't yeah, do it well, not last. Was it year before last? or Was it last year? Two years. They, yeah, yeah, they put him out there. I, I just don't want them to do that. Just like you said, I'd rather him be weak at one position than two. You know, I mean, he's, he's right. to me. To me, I think he is the. You know. He, he finally got comfortable and settled down and became a really good slot corner. And with the amount of 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end that um, these teams are running right now, you got to have somebody that can handle that slot, man. Cause all the premier guys go to the slot, you know yeah. what I mean? And he covers those yeah. guys pretty yeah. well. All the premier guys go to the slot. Well, Derek, you brought up an interesting point with Shield, uh, and you, when you yeah. asked him about the, the Eagles front, you know, including the linebackers, the improvement there, but, how much is that going to make up for a lack of talent on the back end? I mean, I, you're getting to the passer, uh, the pass, excuse me, the, the opposing quarterback consistently enough. You could take a lot of heat off of those guys. Now, if you're not, it's it's going to be a field day for some of these quarterbacks they're going to be facing. But I think that's a big component of this too, is the pass rush. Well, we've seen teams in the past do just that. You know, load up in the trenches in the front seven, and and had a weaker secondary, but they had one of the top 10, 12 defenses in the league because. Their defense was so good against the run, so mm -hmm. good at putting pressure on a quarterback. It took so much pressure off of what was a Achilles heel of a defense, which was an, a, a suspect secondary. Tampa and Bay. If, you, mm -hmm. Tampa Bay is a prime example. Yep. Now, 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 eventually Tampa Bay got it right. Tampa Bay built their front seven first, and then all of a sudden they built the back end, and they had some, some ballers on the back end of that defense over the last couple of years. You know, But they, they were always a top-10 defense because they were so tenacious – um, you know, in the trenches, you look at the Rams before they started adding the likes of Jalen Ramsey, you know, they built around Aaron Donald and their front seven was lethal mm -hmm. and they were a playoff team because their front seven kept them in games and they had so many offensive weapons. And I can see that happening with this team. You know, the only thing, the biggest question mark now is how much will it, the quarterback improve? 
And I'm with Barrett, and I'm willing to give the guy a chance. You know, he's yep. he's only in his second year of being a starter. You can't uh, you got to wait at least three years before you can see what what a player is or isn't at that quarterback position if he's getting consistent reps, a uh, consistent game reps. Jalen Hurst has had one year of consistent game reps. Now he's year two into the same system for the first time since who knows how long for him. You know, so I, I'm going to sit back and you know we can critique. We can it's fair to critique what we saw and say. This is what I think he needs to work on. It's right. not fair. To, you know, it's not fair. You see all these comments on social media and even in our chat comments, you know, Jalen Hurts sucks. Jalen Hurts is not going to do this. Jalen Hurts is not going to improve. You don't know that. You know, if, if you know that for sure, you know, hey, I, I, you know, play the lottery. You should be you should be well off playing the lottery if you know all that. <laughs> Nobody knows that. Not even a coach knows that. And a coach is with that player every day. You sent him to get grooming to quarterback coach in California. You've given him weapons now, some more weapons to play with in this offense. You're strengthening your defense to help the offense out, you know, especially get off the field and give the ball back to the offense. So this organization is doing everything it can to make Jalen Hurts' continued transformation a little bit easier. There's a big part of it that's going to be on Jalen Hurts because, let's face it, the quarterback is the most magnified position in all of football. There's no question about that, okay? Mm -hmm. And so a big part of that is on Jalen Hurts. But to sit here today and say Jalen Hurts sucks or Jalen Hurts is never going to do this or improve on that, you can't do that. Get a kid a chance. That's all you can do. Yeah, and, and look, it, it, the, the I think the Eagles may have been players in trying to get some of the bigger names, but maybe those bigger names weren't interested, right? For whatever the circumstance right, right, was, right. it was a weak draft at the quarterback position. Everything aligned to give him another chance here Right. In an offense he's comfortable with, with better weapons, which they've done. The Eagles have done their part. I be, yeah. I truly believe that. Yeah. Now, okay, Jalen, it's up to you. And and the thing is, a, a lot of times, guys in this – look, you ultimately you have to have the talent, and that's really what it's going to come down to. But right. when right. you have a work ethic like Hertz has, you feel much better about your chances. And there's no doubt in my mind, him coming in with a comfort level with the offense, having worked his tail off again mm -hmm. all summer, knowing he's the starter again, all these things play in his favor. And and the beauty of this is by the end of the year, we're going to know – we're not going to be sitting here with the, well, we'll see. We're going to know one way or the other. That's the yep. good thing. And it may be time to move on. You have two first-round picks, and it's going to be a better quarterback draft. You can do things if that – but, if man, think about if he can play. If, if you don't have to dedicate a pick to a quarterback right. in right. next year's draft, you just keep, you know, sustaining this team and getting better and younger, man – would be beautiful for this squad see i'm looking at overthecap.com right now <laughs> and as a, as we sit here right now they're telling us the eagles currently have 10.8 million in cap space available okay so you got to keep x amount of that to sign all these rookies you just drafted and these rookie free agents okay so you know you're talking about who are they going to bring in well you're not going to have a lot of free money to bring in a James Bradbury or somebody right. like that. You're going to have to take a step down and get one of these, a uh, Joe Hayden who wants to be mm -hmm. out there, who wants to play Trey Waynes, who's looking for a job, guys like that, you know, and you know, if, if that helps solidify the spot temporarily, that's what mm -hmm. you do. A lot of teams do that. You can't get everything you want. You know, there's no all-star team in the national football league at every position. You have teams right. that are good, you know, in, 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 across the board. They have depth maybe across the board interchangeable parts, but there's no so-called all pro team at every position in the national football league, you know, and the Eagles are, and, and, and Rob, you're right. I think the Eagles have done everything they could possibly do this off season to make the overall product that much better. You have a good core of youth players that you're relying on to continue uh, to carry on what you ended in 2021. You've added some veterans. You brought in Reddick. Uh, you brought in A.J. Brown. You got stronger. We, we assume in the trenches with Jordan Davis. Yeah. We we hope N'Kobe Dean can give you what you need. You brought in Kazir White. You know, Devonta Smith is a year older. Quez Watkins is a year older. You already have established one of the best offensive lines in the National Football League. You have a good stable of young running backs. That's all you can ask for. Now, the biggest criteria is health. Keep the health. This Eagles team has been beat up for the last several years, man. Yes. They've had an injury problem. Health yep. is a big factor moving forward. If they can stay healthy, they're going to be right there in the mix at the end. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like you said, Derek, we if we focused on we we could do this exercise during you know next week or whatever with the NFC East, maybe you're going to find 
if, if not as many, maybe even more with a lot of teams in terms of holes at certain right. positions. Like, right. like the Eagles have serious depth at the defensive line and offensive line, yes. like serious yep. depth that, that yep. other teams don't have. Are they shorter in some areas? For sure. The secondary is the thing that screams at you minus slay. But right. that applies to a lot of teams around the league who are in worse shape than the Eagles are. Look, right. th- th- this whole thing, come, for me, it's obvious because you could say this about any team. But if Hertz plays well, I th- I think this team is going to do some damage. I don't think they're in a great division. I don't think that right. it's a right. tough schedule, particularly. I think, in fact, I think it's right. a pretty easy schedule. Um, and and now you have the ability to get to the quarterback. You have the ability to diversify your offensive passing game with with Brown. Like I, I, the sky's the limit here. If Jalen Hurts is a player, plain yep. and simple. There's no question about it. If if Jalen Hurts improves a little bit, this team could still win the division. You know, because of the major hits Dallas took, uh, Jalen Hurts, you know, protects the ball decently well. You know, okay, he made some young mistakes. Okay, so what? That's going to happen. You know, he threw some turnover picks he shouldn't have thrown. He missed a lot of wide open receivers. Okay, but you know what? Okay, let's see what he does in year two. This is what the offseason is for. Right. You know what? You're working with him now. You're getting him special, you know, tutoring to help him see things and to do things a little bit better. Even if his arm strength does not improve, he can still be an efficient intermediate passer in the National Football mm-hmm. League, especially with all the talent and interchangeable parts he has now. But I, 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 people keep saying that, saying that, you know, oh, he doesn't have a, a strong – he has an NFL arm. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with his arm strength. He can make right. every throw in the book. I mean, you know, your strong arms don't necessarily equate into you being a good player. Dick yes. had the strongest arm in the NFL the time he was in the NFL. Mile. That's right. He could throw a country mile, but was he accurate? See, that's that's where yeah. you know yeah. you look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady has a noodle for an arm, yep. but he understands how to throw the ball and and, and is accurate with the ball. Absolutely, that's his game. You can learn that. I mean, I, I I went back and I look at Allen and watching his throws from his rookie year up until now. He has a cannon of an arm. Yes, he can throw yep. the ball. He has a stronger yep. arm. Than uh than 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 Hertz does, but if you look at his actually was trash. He was right around fifty percent his first two years in the league. Right. right. He got better going into his third year. So you can get better. This notion that you know quarterbacks are what they are. You know, no, they're not mm-hmm. what they are. They're they they become, um, they they get better. I mean, I know for I know for a fact Hertz will get better, but it's yep. because because the kid works so damn hard to be as the best player he can be. He's going to mm-hmm. cross every T. He's going to dot every I. He's going to take care of everything he can to be the best player to be, and he's proven it every single year because he's gotten progressively better every single year. Yeah, and one of the things, Barrett, they did for Allen, they got him Stephon Diggs, right? Yes, and they, indeed. Right. Right, so Allen around him, yes. Okay, and now you, you give Jalen Hurts AJ Brown, and it's like here we go. Okay, you you have a a Pro Bowl caliber mm-hmm. with a Devonte Smith. Think about the leap that Devonte Smith's going to take from year one to year two. How mm-hmm. much better he's going to be now that he has a feel for the pro game, and he's right. another one with a work ethic that is just you know unmatched. This dude is constantly, constantly working on his craft. So. You know, you love that. There's not a question about how badly these guys want it. And that I right, think that's a right. big piece of this. No question about it. No question. Mm. He, he's you know, it, it's tough. It's tough when I when I when I talk about Jalen because I know for a fact, you know, he's a great kid. I know for a fact he's gonna work his butt off to become the best player in being. But I don't know, you know, what's his ceiling. Yeah. His ceiling. Just when you think it's 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 you know right there, he pushes it up a notch even more. Right. You know he's 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 gotten better every single year, and that's because he works so daggone hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you can improve with with a lot of his deficiency. You can improve in your pre snap reads. All you got to do once you start seeing things, that's how your pre pre gap um, pre snap reads get get better. If you see, oh, I saw this before. I saw that corner roll up. When I saw that corner roll up, that safety went over. So since that happened, my pre-snap read is I'm gonna hit that seam on the backside because I have a seam right by my tight end. Right. And 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 I can hit that. That's what a pre-snap read is. Pre-snap read is seeing something you've already seen and understanding what they're gonna do. You saw it in film. Okay, I'm in the film. I see this. I, 
all right, they're going to run an ME blitz, MEB blitz from the left side. When they run this MEB blitz, that means everybody's going to clear that zone. Now I got to figure out a way in which I could get my receiver into that zone. So maybe you have to throw the ball into that zone and pull the receiver over. Those are all things that you learn from experience. It's not something you just automatically have. You know what I'm saying? And that's the difference. I mean, there's some there's some guys, you know, that just have that it, that it factor. You know what I'm saying? But they right, come right. few and far between. Yeah, the burrows the A-Rods, are yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. A-Rods, they come few and far between, man. Yeah. You can be a very functional, um, 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 you know, top ten quarterback just from getting better and working your way into that capacity. Yeah, and, and plus yeah. helping your, your, your officer quarter slash head coach helping you out also. Right, and I don't think it's a knock. It could be, we could, we get so insane with quarterbacks, but I don't think it's a knock to say is his ceiling Ryan Tannehill, Derek Carr, somewhere in that, right. which is a real good quarterback, but not good enough to win you a Super Bowl. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that may be where we fall with this, but I don't know yet. I want to give him this year. I, we, we, we want everything yesterday in, in yeah. our society. We want to <laughs> microwave everything. Yep. yep. You know, when the, but Bar- Derek takes it the, you know, the other way. You know, I'm, so, I want to slow cook this thing and just see this year what we have. Yeah. I want to yeah. put him in the green egg, man. I, I want to find out. <laughs> there you, you know, go. There you go. That's you know right. what I mean? And, I, and again, you, you have the luxury, I think, of the way that you're set up with the with the personnel around him to find it out this year yes and that's yes. okay too but everyone wants to pronounce it either he's the man or he sucks and it's like can we just see let's just see this time this is this is a tough tough place to play right. man and, and i get it like yeah. I, I understand that it's the, it's the nature of the beast with that position it really is so yeah. understood but i think this is a little bit of a different circumstance where we frankly we don't know right now and that and maybe you, you might say that's a knock we should know by now i i don't I didn't. I saw such a good thing, a number of good things, and a number of things I didn't love. So let's see where it's at now. Well, you know, you look at. I mean, I'm looking at the. I'm, I'm always looking at the stream and and uh, talking about Tannehill. Tannehill sucked his first three years in the league. Absolutely sucked. He played. Yeah, he for had a to team get out of Miami. Sucked. Yeah, he had yeah. To he get played out. for a team that sucked. Yep. So it was, it was his environment that that caused him to suck the way that he did. Yeah. I mean, he was. I mean. But Christ, he was a he was a receiver for the most part in Texas A and M until he became a quarterback his last year. You know, mm-hmm. so um, you know it, you can always get better. Ten, I think Ten will was ever going to be good. You know, um, you don't know. It's just like uh, just just looking at what's going on in Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. and that whole situation there. You know, there's nothing productive that could come out of that 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 situation when it comes to to, right. to Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they gave him every opportunity. They gave him all the weapons, and he sucked. Yep. That's also the other end of the spectrum you can look at with Hurts. They yep. gave they gave Baker Mayfield the best receivers, the best run game, the best offensive line, and he did nothing with it. Yep. That's also a direction that Hurts can go in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's real. But no it can question. also be a, a counter argument with it. But you can have an Allen and have, you know, you give him a player, give him an all. So, you know, we're not saying that I'm not saying that he's gonna be the next, you know, you know, heir apparent to 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 you know uh you know whoever a rod or anything like that. Yeah. But what I am saying, he's gonna do everything within his power to be the best version of himself as a quarterback he can be. Mm-hmm. All right, Baker didn't uh, do that. No, I agree with you. Let's get a quick timeout. Let's come back. We'll keep rolling with some birds, get it back to the Sixers game two preview. For their uh, their second round matchup with the Heat, we know no Embiid, no Lowry. Can they get it turned around tonight? Phillies go down again. What is happening there with them? We've talked a lot about Tannehill. A little later in the show, guys, I, I want to run something by you that he had yeah. to say, yeah. which is getting a lot of reaction. That's for sure. We'll do that. We'll I'll tell you who's playing overseas this year and whether the Eagles are one of those teams uh, this year. We will get into that and some uh, some possibly dirty play. <laughs> In the NBA non Sixers series, uh, that, that, that cost the uh, one of the teams a really big player and a really cool moment in a baseball game. We'll get into all of that mm-hmm. when we get back. Barrett Brooks, Derek Gunn, Rob Ellis, Sports Take, Jacob Media, YouTube Network.
stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV, now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Lincoln Financial Field is home to more than just our hometown team. It's a landing place for dreams. Invest in the future of our students from all over Philadelphia and get an exclusive tour of the stadium at the Blocks Aspire to Dreams Gala hosted by Brian Taff of 6ABC. While we aspire to build, our students aspire to dream. Join us for the Blocks Gala on Thursday, May 5th at Lincoln Financial Field. Seats are limited, so reserve yours today at blocks.org slash gala. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, IBEW98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Oh, yeah, back. Third hour of the program. Thanks for hanging with us today. We appreciate it. Sports Take, Jacob Media YouTube Network. He's Barrett Brooks, the man who has his own billboard. How about that? <laughs> we learned that early. White today. Castle. Unbelievable. <laughs> Derek and I are just you know, kind of, we're on the side of the road with a can. A cup I'm telling you, man. Stop, I take man. I take I take my I take my own picture just to put it on the mailbox. Exactly right. <laughs> my my picture's at the mail uh, at the uh, post well, office. At least it's not on a milk carton, man. Yeah, so, exactly. You know. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> the day is young, Barrett. Um, but we talked a lot about the Eagles. Naturally, we talked about the Sixers off the top. We had Amy Fadul on a little bit earlier. Shiel Kapadia. You can check out all of our content if you missed it at YouTube. Uh, Jacob Media YouTube Network. Always there. All the stuff we did over the weekend for the draft, that's there as well. So uh, just give it a grab. Guys, I, I got I to bring the Phillies up because I, I'm, I'm losing my mind here with this team. They go down to a, to a Ranger team that went into the game last night 8-14. and 14. Yes. Okay, a bad Ranger team. This is not the Mets or any of the other excuses that have been put out there. They're playing really good teams. Not a good team. They lose at home. They're now 11-13 and 13 on the season. It, they, they reek of a team that lacks urgency on, on a lot of different fronts. You know, the, the, the Bohm poor fielding reared its ugly head. And to his credit, you know, he really got it turned around after that, that Mets fiasco. But he misplayed two balls. One was an error. One they didn't give him an error for. He had converted 41 chances before that. But that hurt him in a big, big way. Really cost him the game. In addition to the fact that they went two for ten with runners in scoring position. Mm. On, they had a great opportunity, guys. In the bottom of the seventh, nobody yep. out. They're down 6-3, runners second and third. Pop out by Schwarber, strike mm-hmm. out Bowman Harper, ends the inning. That gunner was the game right there. No question about it. But, you know, they out, they out hit the Rangers 11 or 9, I believe it was, but they're not getting the timely hits consistent, consistently enough. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, um, I heard Ricky Metallico on uh, Philly's Post Game Live on NBC Sports Philadelphia. He said, I don't want to hear any more about this, this early in the season stuff. He said, you think the Mets are thinking that right now? Look at the way the Mets are sw- playing. They just swept the Braves. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the way the Mets are playing right now. He says, you know, you got to turn it on now. You know, you got a lot invested into this team. This team was supposed to be a lot better 
than it's showing right now. And yeah. you know what? When you get in bad habits, a lot of times it's hard to get out of those bad habits. And that's and it. it. Yep. You, you, you look at a Ranger Suarez. He comes out first inning. Boom. Two-run homer. Give it up mm-hmm. to this guy, Mitch Garver. Okay? Mm-hmm. In the Phillies battle back, in the Phillies pitching staff can't hold the lead. Yeah. This has been a theme off, off and on all season. For every one exceptional pitching outing they get, then they get two or three mediocre or less than mediocre pitching out, outings to follow that. Yeah, um, This team cannot find a measure of consistency. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Girardi's got to go, Girardi's got to go. Hey, how about calling out some of the players that are not I holding up there? The let's deal? do it. You want to do it? All right, I let's go. Schwarber's hitting 188, okay? Making yep. 20 million a year. Hoskins, 202. Yep. Segura, 230. There you go. Harper, 242. Veerling, 190. Yeah, these all are all guys in the lineup last night, there okay? You go. And Schwarber, Harper, not so much Hoskins, but Segura's making a you know nice, nice penny. Well, you gotta oh. give a little credit too now. You know, look at Alec Bohm. I mean, he's 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 from everything that happened in the beginning, he is definitely holding himself at that third base a lot better than what I thought, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 right. Up until last night, he, you're right. He has, uh, to his credit, and he's been a very consistent hitter for this team. Probably yeah. their most consistent yeah. hitter, period, yeah. of anybody. But you have a lot of big boys who aren't pulling their weight. And I understand you're without Castellanos last night. Mm-hmm. His wife, and, and God bless he and his wife. They had a, they had a baby uh, today. Uh, awesome. Uh, they're without. Herrera had a sinus yep. episode. Al- some kind of allergy, some kind of allergy episode. Yeah, yeah, allergy episode. So huh? when I, I don't know, yeah, I don't. I, he I, I don't because of that. I don't care that he's not yep. in the lineup. I, but 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 the problem <laughs> the problem was Barrett. So you know you had to move. Like Veerling had to play right because Cassianos couldn't play right because Harper still can't throw. Yeah, and we're we're getting yep. an update. Reportedly, we're getting an update today on where what's going on with his elbow. I I don't like this man. Like he don't hasn't played. Oh. It, oh, don't say it. I mean, at least you can keep DHing him, I think, because he's not. He says it doesn't hurt when he swings, but he hasn't played in the field since like April 16th. Yep. It, it, that you know, three weeks, it's not a good sign. Well, so they said, they said the injury is is like the the preclude to the to to Tommy John's. Ugh. Oh no! You don't know, say that. Don't yeah, say they that, say it's man. like the step. It's the step before you get Tommy John's. You need Tommy John surgeries. So that's yeah. what they're saying. Um, I mean, you know. We're lucky we got DH uh, DH now. You know we can have a DH now, but you know we need to use that more so for the guys. You know that that aren't swinging a bat. You know right. You know maybe give them a little break as far as playing and make them DH a little bit so they get their bats back. Yeah. But I'll say this, um, Girardi, I, I I do have to give him a little bit because I, I just don't see the fire right in him. And and you know we talk a lot about players taking on. The you know the the mindset, personality yeah the personality um, of 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 who's coaching you you know what I'm saying who who your skipper is you know and at this point Gerard is not giving me any of that that fire that I I would think you would have when you have a lineup the way you have it you I know? Barrett I agree and I'm not a quick to fire a guy type I'm really not but they they look like they're going through the motions right. and I don't know if. Right. Being away from baseball for a couple of years like he was and collecting a nice check to do broadcasting and, you know, all that. Man, he he they he doesn't appear to have the same edge that he used to, Girardi. You know, even uh, when Schwarber got tossed, he didn't have his back to go out there in, in a real way. Right. You know, like things like that, the players notice that, man. And I'm not excusing the players by any stretch. I'm the one who just gave you those numbers. Trust me. I, they right, are not right. pulling their weight either. This is a collective failure here so far this season. They they should be a hell of a lot better than two games under 500 through 24 games with all the money they're paying that, you know, out in payroll. Well, at least the the, the bats the bats are swinging a little bit better. Uh, it's, it's coming down to this pitching now. I mean, this pitching has got to get a lot better. You know, on paper with the Zach Wheelers and the Suarez and Aaron Nola's, it's a decent pitching staff, mm-hmm. but there, there's no consistency. And the bullpen comes out, you know, one reliever comes out, throws decent, the next one comes out, and all of a sudden you're singing a Star Spangled Banner because they're giving up a home run that's going, you know, 425 feet o- over the fence. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, and when you play teams like Texas, and, and I know it's a, a quick series, mm-hmm. you, 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 Texas is the, is the team that you 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 feel good against. It's a feel-good yeah, series. Yes, yes. Because – you got four heavyweight games coming up against the Mets. 
You just lost two out of three to the Mets. You're going to play the Mets, the teams you're going to be chasing, it seems like, all season long for the rest of this year. You will play them 13 times before the month of May is over. You've got to at some point make a statement. I'll take a split against the Mets right now. Please do not lose three out of four against the Mets. You cannot. It cannot keep happening like can't this. Can't afford man. to. Yes, you're right. You're right. I mean, and then you're going out to the West Coast. You got to play the Dodgers. You see the way the Dodgers are swinging the bats. Yeah, and their pitching well, staff out there. Maybe Girardi takes a page out of you know Buck's book. You know what I'm saying? Show the yeah. fire he has. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, you gonna hit my guy? I'm a, he looked like he wanted to go out there and hit somebody. You know? Yes. That yes. fire, that drive. You know, and this is an old dude, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not have that same fire? Maybe he sees that from across the way and grabs a little bit of him. You know, because. I just don't see the 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 same the same uh, you know just fire to go out there and really you know impose your will, man. I, I don't see it, man. And, the, and this keeps on. up. There will be a change made. I, I'm telling you right now. They the payroll. They're in the luxury tax. Dave Dombrowski right. did not. He inherited Joe Girardi. Did not right, hire right, Joe. Right, Girardi. right, right, right. Those kind of things you know? spell quick hook. If this if this keeps up, I am telling you guys. I, I, like I'm not saying. Tonight, tomorrow, by June. Right. Yep. Right. Well, I mean, yep. look at this though. I mean, you. I mean, it almost looks like. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna try a man's heart like that. But I mean, it's just. It almost seems like he's trying. You know, he's he, he, he's like, all right, you know, fire me, did you know? Or he's resigned to it. Yeah. He sort of resigned. Right. To you it. know what I'm saying? It's like you know, all right, I know what's gonna happen. You know, what I mean. Yeah. No, it's, I hear you. I hear. All right. Good. Man, Let's get away from that for a minute. Here, let me give you some good stuff. Did you see what happened in the Yankees Blue Jays game last oh, night? Oh yeah, yeah, man. So Aaron Judge, you know, jacks a home run to uh, to about left. That was left left center somewhere in that range. Uh, a, a guy in a well, I'm trying to remember who was the Blue Jays. Yankees. Blue, Blue Jays, Jays, sorry, Blue Jays, Jays yeah. uh, hat. Obviously, a Blue Jays fan catches it, right? But then immediately turns to the kid in the aisle next to him, little kid, gives him the ball. Yeah. And the kid gives this guy this giant hug and like yeah. everybody in the section was like, oh, yeah. it was it was really <laughs> like it was one of those feel good moments you need sometimes because there's so much crap in life. Right. That right, you yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I know it sounds like a little thing, but it was a really cool thing. That gesture that that, that guy made to that kid. It really it meant a lot to that kid. Trust me. Wow. That, that, I mean, that's really what cool. the sports is all about, man. That kid will never forget that, man. Just like when Vi gave me my shoes, man. You don't forget about stuff like mm -hmm. that, man. You just don't know what he might have built in that kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, here, here it is. Look, here so it that, is. That, that's the guy who caught it, okay? So you see this little kid. Little kid's a Yankee. Look at the kid's face. And what? look at him. I mean, look at that. Oh, look at wow. that, man. Like that, that's, Xander, that's great job. About. Great job getting this. That That is so cool of that dude. And he did it immediately. He wasn't being pressured by anybody sitting around him. He caught the ball, caught the home right, run, right. and and went right to the kid to give it to him. And the kid was just beside himself and so appreciative, man. Gave the guy like a hug. Oh God, man, that was that hope, hope, that's strength. gut that's gut wrenching, man. It it is. Yeah, cool, man. That, that's hope, that's what it's all about. Hopefully that moment rubs off on Yankees fans because Yankees fans are notorious <laughs> for being anything but nice fans yeah, true. when true. you go to their ballpark, man. But, you know, you're right. Uh, that kid, you know, he may never know that guy's name. He may right. never see that guy again. But it's been captured. You know, thank, thank, thank you because of the advent of modern technology. He'll have that moment for the rest yep. of his life. Somebody in his family will pull that off put mm -hmm. it on a DVD or something or put it on a phone. He'll have that for the rest of his life, man. And hopefully that kid learned a valuable lesson as well in terms of, you know what, do, you know, do unto others as you would have others do unto you, you know, Amen. And, and pass that on to somebody else. And I hope a lot of kids and a lot of grownups out there saw that right. moment yep. and realized, Hey, you know what? I understand. You know, even if we're even kids as adults, man, think about how many baseball games you watch. And people get jacked up and high five each other when they catch a foul ball, and they sit there and they hold that ball like it's a a a a, 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 a sphere of gold, you know, like <laughs> something they've been waiting for their whole lives. Yeah. But this guy got up and gave the ball to a kid who was a Yankee fan, knowing it means a lot more to this kid over here than it ever will mean to me, man. Yep. Well, and that's yeah. a great that's a great learning tool for not just kids but adults as well. Yep. Well, didn't didn't it happen like um I, I saw it like a month ago where. Um, a home run got hit, and this guy jumps up, and the kid 
like grabs it and then it falls out of the kid's hand, bounces yeah. on the ground, yeah. and the adult came from like five rows over, uh, five seats over, grabs the ball and walks away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what is that, that all about? about? It's, yeah. It, yeah, it's a nightmare yeah. when that kind of stuff. Like, dude, you're an adult. That's what that. are you doing, man? Right, like, right. It, it's a foul ball. Give. The, I'll tell you the other one that was funny. Did you guys see? So, the guys with either his wife or his girlfriend or friend, whatever. But it's a, it's a male and, and a female. This female sitting down. I think this was from Sunday, maybe. So the dude's trying to catch a foul ball, and he's got a full cup of beer. He's got a full beer in his hand, right? And and he goes over to make the catch. And as he makes the catch, the beer goes flying out and and just nails this woman. I mean, and and she's like, really? Like, really? (laughs) Just looking at him like, you got to be kidding me, man. I came to the game, and I just get soaked by you, you knucklehead. (laughs) You're trying you to gotta, to you gotta sit there. You gotta sit there for the rest of the game smelling like stale beer. Yeah. Your hair, your hair's all messed up. Your make your makeup's all messed up, you know, and, and you gotta sit there. Um, but hey, that dude made a business decision, man. He <laughs> said, he said, Look, I'm not giving up my beer. I paid good money for that, probably depending on the ballpark. Might have yeah. paid, you know, seven, eight dollars for that beer, man. You right. never know. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, seven dollars is cheap. There are uh, no. no beers for seven, eight dollars anymore. Oh, for hey, man, at least no. twelve. Twelve, oh, your, no your minimum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, he made he made a business decision, playing the same. He said, "I'm getting the ball. I'm keeping my beer. Anybody gets in my way, hey, I'm sorry, but hey, you know, such is the case. <laughs> That's it. Go. Yeah, you know. You, but, you know, mean, going yeah. go ahead. Now, going back to that moment with the kid for a moment, I was just thinking. You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. That old commercial with me and Joe Green, the Coke commercial, yeah, where he throws yeah, the yeah. kid the jersey in the tunnel, and yeah. the kid said, "Hey." Thanks, Mean Joe. Mm-hmm. And he has his, right. his, his, his sip of coke. You know, never mind. It's, I don't know why that just popped into my mind. You know that what they did that guy did last night was like a Mean Joe Green moment in that yeah. Coca Cola commercial. You know, they made, me TV, they made a TV movie out of that whole just that commercial. Right. Did they? It's did crazy. They? Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. You no, know, I, it remind me of Sandlot, man. Remember Sandlot? Oh uh, yeah. East. You know what I'm saying? Then you know, yeah. they figure out, oh, you know, this this guy's great. This guy's nice. They're just trying to get his dad's baseball. That's I it. mean, how many times? I'm, I was in that type of I was in that type of predicament a lot, man, growing up because my pops had you know two baseballs. You know, I don't know, I forget who they were signed for. Yeah. And I'm looking at it, I'm walking by, I need a ball to go play with. And I, I, I it was several opportunities where I thought about taking that ball. You know what <laughs> my, I'm saying? I my dad, it. yeah, my dad grew up in, in West Philly and he when he was a kid, he loved the obviously he loved the Phillies, but Robin Roberts was an, was a pitcher for the Phillies who was a Hall of Famer, he's a great pitcher. Yeah, that was his favorite player. He had a ball. Signed by Rob, and he'd have a lot of collectibles. My dad, it wasn't really his thing, but he had a Robin Roberts ball. But there was a lot of temptation to just grab that bad boy and go out and play a lot. And Ooh. I never did, thank God. But yeah, I hear you. Man. You still have the ball? Yeah, I have it. I still have it. I kept you, it. Hey you, hey, you need to find out how much it's worth. You never know. <laughs> I, I you know saying. what? What I did when I cleaned out my parents' house, I I kept a, a pretty good card collection. Okay. Um, I have an Ozzy Smith rookie. Wow, I have a Ricky Henderson yeah. rookie, yeah, uh, and a couple others that are that are pretty sweet, man. So I, yeah, I, I think it's time to make a move. It's time. I I can't <laughs> even begin to tell you how many cards, football, NBA, baseball cards. I had them in a big hope chest when mm-hmm. I was a kid, and when I left home to go to college, you know, my mom said, "What are you going to do with this?" I said, "I'm just throw them out," and I'm talking oh. about cards like Oscar Robertson. Lou Alcindor, oh. uh, the Van Arsdale twins that pay, play for Phoenix, Jerry West. Mm-hmm. You know, I had cards like this. And who would have known that the card business would have become such a hot commodity in, in the 80s and 90s into the 2000s? And yeah. every time I see another card that's going for 750000 $1.2 I'm kicking the table. I can't believe I let this stuff get out of my grand. I told well, my mom, throw, throw them out, mom. I don't want them. Unbelievable. But same thing with me, man. Like, um, I really didn't get it till like my last two years being in NFL. Yeah. But look at all the players that I played with, played against. I'm thinking about, you know, I should have had autographs from yeah. Mr. White, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Reggie White. Um, I did ask Jerry Rice for him. He said no. So I he said no. Yeah, he said no. We had just wow. whooped they tail. We wow. had beat we had beat the snot out of him. He was playing with the Raiders and, and um I was with the Steelers then. He said, man, no, man, and ran into the place. Damn. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so interesting, couple of Eagles meeting with the media today, uh, including Jalen Hurts. Interesting quote. It's my team. I'm ready to go. And he's wearing a Sixers hat, by the way, from the AI. There you era. go. He's smart. Show, 
showing a little love for the Sixers. So yeah, he he met with me. Slay met with the media too. You know, Slay's always outspoken, always has something uh, interesting to say. But you know, naturally, Jalen Hurts was talking about what a great addition AJ Brown is and how it's going to change the receiving room. Mm-hmm. And he said, "quote uh, I think this is an exciting time to be an Eagle." He, he's got every leadership trait. There's no doubt about that. That he he gets that you know that part of it. But he's here for the offseason workouts, as a lot of Eagles are in town as well. So that's uh that's kind of where things are from an Eagles perspective. If you're just tuning in again, we're going to have uh, how uh, Chris Long, Howie's son is going to be joining us. Former Eagle, former Eagle Super Bowl champion, former Patriot Super Bowl champion uh, is going to be joining us tomorrow. Um, I, a couple other odds and ends just to sort of jump around. Did you see the Ryan Tannehill quote where he was, he, he hit on a number of different things, but yes. one of the things that he discussed, they asked him about uh, Malik Willis and, and, and mentoring him essentially, you, you know, he was the, they drafted him, uh, and Ryan Tannehill is obviously the, the heir apparent, or he's the heir apparent to Ryan Tannehill. And he said, it's not my job to mentor him. Mm-hmm. And that, that brought about a lot of controversy. Some players coming to his defense saying, yeah, that's, it's a cutthroat league. You do what you got to do for yourself. Others saying, come on, man, you know, others, people tutored you along the way. Barry, I'll start with you. You played. What do you think about that? Um, I think I'm the opposite of that because, um, it allowed me to stay in the league another two years, no, another three or four years, uh, because I was a mentor to you know Max Stars, Chris Kimawatu, uh, guys like that, you know, and it, it kept me in the league a longer period of time because I did mentor the, to those guys. Mm-hmm. But I've seen, you know, I mean, younger in my career, you know, I mean, it was me. I got drafted in the second round. Then the next year, they just drafted Jermaine Mayberry, and right. I wasn't trying to teach him nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not gonna teach him anything because I was still young too. Mm-hmm. He was my boy, but I wasn't trying to, you know, give him a leg up on start in front of me. And that's why he brought him in to 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 to, to replace me, right? Or I thought to replace me, either me or or or, or um or uh the guy on the other side. What was his name? Anton Davis. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it was, it was a doggy dog cutthroat type of position. When I got to Detroit, same thing. They drafted Stalker McDougal the same year they brought me in. Dr. McDougal. Oh, I that's wasn't... a name. How about that poll? Right. So, I mean, I I, I was like, no, nah, I'm not teaching him anything, you know, so I ended up starting anyways, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. So that... it just kind of depends on circumstance, I guess? Circumstance, where you are in your career, um, you know, the situation and what the team you're in. So do you find Tannehill out of line for, for saying, I'm not here to mentor him? I, I don't. I don't okay. because he's hanging on by a thread anyways. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, you, you, <clears throat> the situation, you know, I, I had – I was in a situation where I had a really, really good, um, really good team that that cared a lot about you know players and you know like you know it would probably have been different if I was on probably the Eagles team. Hmm. Uh, if I was in the same situation in my career with the Eagles, I probably wouldn't have either. I'd probably been like uh, Tannehill, but I was with the I was with the Steeler organization that told them, "Hey, don't worry about it. You know, we know you can play. Um, just mm-hmm. make sure you get these guys ready." We're gonna keep you around, you know. Keep the, you know, get these guys ready. Make sure they're ready to play. Um, you, you're not gonna start, but you are gonna. You know, you are gonna be on this team. You're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna continue to pay you because what you bring to the team um, is something we need on this team. And that's being, a, you know, a, a player that can slash coach. And the mere fact that you can play every position, you know, on offensive line, you know, you're you're valuable to us, and, and we're gonna keep you on a squad because of that. So well, it made things different. Yeah. The, the big backstory behind Tannehill is that, uh, you know, he revealed what he went through during this offseason in, in hindsight of throwing three picks and a playoff loss. He didn't sleep for weeks. Yeah. You know, he, he had to go through therapy and right. is still going through therapy. And he said it wasn't until he got back around a uh, close knit of friends uh, because basically he had isolated himself from the world after what he went through. I and mean, he said it was a real inner struggle. He said he really didn't start to come out of it until he got back around close friends and teammates and got back in the building. And, you know, I don't have a problem with him saying that. I I just think he should have been a little bit smarter because everything, you know, there are a whole lot of brave people, you know, behind a computer nowadays who want to attack any and everybody for any and every little thing out there. And I think we've seen enough of it in recent history. When you take comments and they can be twisted 20 different ways from the sun. And it's not exactly what you meant. You can go all the way back to when Brett Favre said the same thing about Aaron Rodgers. You know, I'm not here to mentor him. You know, I'm here to play football. Mm-hmm. And Brett Favre took a lot of heat for that for years 
you know, him and Aaron eventually kissed, made up, you know, and reconciled. But, you know, I, 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 I don't blame Tannehill for speaking his heart, but I just think he could have been a little bit more, a little smarter about it, knowing there was going to be a lot of backlash from that comment. Yeah, I just – I don't know – I still, Derek, and, and again, I didn't listen to the entire press conference in fairness to him, but in reading a little more in-depth right, right. there, I don't know if that guy's in a good place right now going into the season still. I still yeah, think he, yeah. there could be some lingering effects from the way that playoff game you know, well, went yeah. down. And he's upset that A.J. Brown yes, is yeah, out of there. Exactly. Like, yeah. He yeah. wasn't consulted on either thing. You know, that's – there's a lot going on there. We'll that. see. Look at my boy. My boy, you know, you guys know Marcus, man, uh, played with the Eagles. Well, Marcus you know, Smith. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he there, there he is right there, man. Appreciate you watching, man. I mean, appreciate you listening and watching. Uh he see what he said when is I was that Marcus rookie. Smith? No, yeah. no, not Marcus Smith. Oh, okay. Uh Thompson. Well, when Marcus re- Thompson. Okay. I think it was Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell he said uh when he was a rookie, the wrong routes. Wow. Stacey and Tony Brooks would tell him the wrong routes. And wow. That, that, that that's happened before. You know what I'm saying? That's rough. Uh, yeah, well, that's I mean, rough. imagine being a rookie and we're out there and and wow. you know, I had a I had a uh, you know a tight end. The name was we call him Toolbox. Marcus Thomas. Sorry, Marcus. Yeah, our, yeah. our apologies. Marcus Thomas. Okay. Scott Thompson. Yep. Fullback. Yeah, you know Marcus. Yeah. Well, I had a you know old. We call him Toolbox. Ed. Mm-hmm. What, what, Marcus. What was Ed's name? They called Toolbox. What was Ed's name? Um, Ed. Um, Ed West. His name was Ed West. Mm-hmm. And we'd be in the game, and if he wanted help, he would tell me the wrong call, so I would help him, and I'd be mm. on the wrong page. Like oh on a play, we have stretch play. Um, he would block down, and I pull around and get the linebacker. Or if the guard is covered, my rule was the guard covered. I had to block down on the guard, and then he'd have to block the defensive end. Well, he didn't like blocking the defensive end by himself, so he would call me out to help him. So he call a scoop call. I'm like, I'm no, I'm supposed to block down. Scoop, scoop, scoop. And I, I then I have to tell him, he said, no, you can't scoop. So I got two veterans. I got, you know, Ed right. West playing tight end, telling me to do something. Mm-hmm. But then I have Guy McIntyre, who's my guard, telling me to do something. And when you're a rookie, who do you listen to? Both of them been in the leagues the same amount of time. Right. Both guys are old heads that you got to listen to. I was screwed, you know what I'm saying, because they were both telling me to do certain stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, eventually I would do what, you know, Guy McIntyre told me to do. And Ed would be up there, so Ed will look wrong, and then he'll go to the meeting and say, I call, I told him to do I told him to do this. And the coach will say, well, he's not supposed to do that. Oh, if I call him to do this, he's supposed to do it. So now mm. I get chewed out by by my guard, and I get chewed out by my tackle. I mean, my, my, yeah, uh, you my can't win. It's a no win. Right, you know. Yeah. No, they did I, it all the time. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like when you set me up in my own home and my wife yelling at me because <laughs> she thought I told you to get out of my house. See where yeah. he learned it from? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, what are you talking about, everyone? Um, like I said, he didn't like he didn't bad like karma. people in his house. Bad karma. So we're, uh, you know, he, he he's had um he's he has this uh I forget what the occasion was. I forgot what it was. Maybe an engagement party or something. Yeah, no, something like remember. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, it was an engagement party. It was an engagement party yeah. for your daughter. So he invites us. There's about 70, 80 people in his house. 70, 80 people in the gun house. And I'm sitting there. And I brought my daughter. To the house, so you know we're sitting there, and we're in the middle. She of the was going to be your shield if Derek started yelling. Right, at you, right, right. So what oh, I yeah. did was, oh yeah. So what I did was, you know, around everybody, start yelling. No, Derek, why are you kicking me and my daughter out? We're not leaving, Derek. No, we're not leaving. And all I see is Trish go, <gasps> and his daughter came up to. Did you just kid him? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I guess I have to leave. That's a trip. dirty okay. pool, man. I'm That's ne- a dirty I'm never, pool. I'm right never, there. I'm never gonna forget that one. <laughs> no. And you know, Barrett, I am the, I'm the master of pranks. You know, I've been plotting ever since. Uh-huh. I'm never gonna yeah. forget that one. Yeah, that yeah. is not gone. You know, you you know what angers said, me the most? About, did you just got, kick? Did, did, yeah. did you? What did you just do? <laughs> you know, you know what, you know what angers me the most about that is that he pulled it off and I didn't. That's what bothers me the most. That's more than anything else. That's what bothers me. Yeah. He got you first. Yeah, yeah, all his friends me. were like this. All the friends yep. were in the house like this. Like, yeah, whoa, blown away. whoa. And they're like, I thought you and Barry were cool. I mean, we see you guys on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, 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 you know, I mean, I was like, man, I can't believe he got the best of me <laughs> in my house. <laughs> but, but there's a boat trip coming up on Saturday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got somebody's big day tomorrow, too. 
big day oh, yeah. tomorrow. We'll just leave it at that. All right. <laughs> Let's come back. Let's get our final time out. We keep it rolling. We'll uh, dive back into the Sixers, get our thoughts on what the, what needs to happen, what's going to happen in this game, too. I got a couple other odds and ends from the NBA and uh, an interesting Tom Brady stat for you guys, which I'll hit you mm. with when we return. Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis, Sports Take, Jacob Media, YouTube Network. Stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV. Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on Action. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Lincoln Financial Field is home to more than just our hometown team. It's a landing place for dreams. Invest in the future of our students from all over Philadelphia and get an exclusive tour of the stadium at the Blocks Aspire to Dreams Gala, hosted by Brian Taff of 6ABC. While we aspire to build, our students aspire to dream. Join us for the Blocks Gala on Thursday, May 5th at Lincoln Financial Field. Seats are limited, so reserve yours today at blocks.org slash gala. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits, go for the fans, go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. We roll into the final segment of the program. Yes, we are sports take. He is Barrett Brooks, D Gun, Rob Ellis. All right. So if you guys have the internet today, man, Rob, you just froze for a second. I did. I really. Wow. What is going on with the internet today? I don't know, man. man. It's been a tough day. Yeah, it's been a tough day for sure. I'm like Amy. I'm I'm right next to my router. Like I literally, it's right at my feet. So I'm I'm hardwired. Same here. I'm hardwired too. I have uh, I have uh, I have routers. We have routers in various parts of the house. We uh, got these pods, these extender pods, and it has really helped because we have so many people in the house who are on Wi-Fi. You know, Mm -hmm. at any given time. So we needed to strengthen it and. You know, luckily, unless you guys tell me, I haven't had a problem yet in terms oh, of... Oh, you just jinxed it. Right? You jinxed you know? it, man. You can't what? do it. Yes. Okay. All, right. <laughs> All right. If I had to throw this out there, you guys have to guess. How many okay. countries has Tom Brady started an NFL game in? How, How many, many countries? countries? Oh, let me see. One. Mexico. Two. I'll say three. Give me them. Mexico. Uh, Canada. Mexico. And in England, incorrect but close. Dang, USA, obviously. Yeah, oh. Mexico. Yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. yourself a little bit. Mexico, England, and this year we're going to add a fourth Germany. 
Oh, what? that's right. Yeah, that's right. Bucks will play in Germany this year, so there he first, will have, he will be time. the only yeah. quarterback. As if he needed more to add to the resume, but no, he's the right, first, yeah. Uh, yeah, quarterback ever to go through to play an NFL game and start an NFL game in four different countries: USA, Mexico, England, and Germany. The other game, the Eagles will not be traveling. By the way, they will not be pl- traveling abroad to play. Seahawks and Bucks play in Germany. That's a nine thirty yeah. start uh, East Coast time. You have. Uh, 49ers and Cardinals are the Mexico game. Yep. So the yep. Eagles are not, and I, I believe the Jags are in uh, London like they always are. But that's that's your uh, international games this year. Well, you got uh, Green Bay playing the Giants in uh, in England. That's that, the other it, one. The, the, what, to, what is it called? Tottenham Stadium or something like that? Yeah. Tottenham? Yeah. Tottenham. Tottenham yeah. 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 All right. But that's uh, – I wanted to throw that at you guys, which I thought was kind of interesting that the Eagles don't have any uh, any international games. All right. When we get it back to the Sixers in a second, but the NBA action last night, some good games. I know we you know, we were texting late with the uh, with the later game, with the Warriors game last night, which – Did you see the pace of that game? Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I, I just – I wow. can sit there and watch John Morant play uh, on a loop for 24 oh straight minutes. It, it, he is insane. 47 last night. They needed that. They did not want to go down 0-2 uh, going back to Golden State. But but it was a chippy game, guys. If yeah, you, it if was. You saw it, yeah, it oh, was. my goodness, yeah. Dylan Brooks, and we're talking really early in this one, straight up clips Gary Payton Jr., the third, yeah, whatever, yeah. Uh, as he's going up for a layup in the air, and he lands on the elbow, broke his elbow. And, uh, you know, Steve Kerr's uh, yelling. Everybody's going crazy. Uh, Brooks got tossed out of the game but uh later in the game Draymond Green gets you know hit in the face he had to get stitches he's flipping off the fans as he's walking back yeah, to the yeah. locker room like a hockey that, player that, that series is, up came back. is pretty interesting man there's a lot going on there in, in that one hey hey man let me tell you something the refs are letting these boys play this yeah. year I don't know why but the refs are letting them play it's shades of back in the early 80s when you had Boston the bad boys in Detroit the mm-hmm. Lakers Whenever they got together, you know it was about they were somebody was throwing down the Knicks. Yep. You know, remember yeah, the oh, Knicks? Yeah. Oh, Pat oh, Riley's oh, Knicks with, with Mason and that crew. Forget what? it. Yes. What? Yes. You know, and I'm and I'm liking this, man. I'm tired of these ticky tack fouls. Call you brush up against a player, man. And all of a sudden, it's a foul, which right. takes you. It takes a lot of prominent players out of their game. No They're doubt. letting these boys play, man. I mean, it's getting to the point now. It's be, it's called hockey basketball. It's, it's, <laughs> a little, it's getting a little out of out of hand, but. I like the fact that the refs are giving them more freedom to play and be more physical, man. It's, Amen. Woo. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. And, and then the you know the early game, Gunner, you touched on it a little bit earlier. It was a it was a much different Celtic team than we saw in Game One. Yeah. They, they yeah. came out determined on defense. You know, naturally Tatum and 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 Jalen Brown, et cetera. They they did their thing, but that was a they played much better. I mean, Giannis is going to get his. We know that. But they did a really good job shutting down almost did everybody you see else. Brown dunk. I mean, oh, oh my good. Oh, oh. Wow. Well, you yeah. know that you, we talk about the Boston defense being the best defense uh, in the league, and it played up to that billing last night. They held Giannis to two for ten. I know. In the first half, he was two yep. for ten. Every time he drove the paint in the first half, you had two guys waiting for him in the paint. Mm-hmm. You know. Now he got his points in the third quarter. He finally got got in the flow in the third quarter and cut into the deficit, but. You know, Milwaukee's rotating defense couldn't get over quick enough to f- stop the open shooter. And, uh, you know, j- and all these guys from Jalen. Jalen Brown was unconscious in the first half shooting threes. Yeah. You know, yeah, and then was. all of a sudden Jason Tatum picked it up. You can't cover everybody. When you play that rotating defense and, and teams like Miami, the Bucks, uh, the Celtics are the best of the best when it comes to playing rotating defense. But, you know, eventually it kept, catches up to you. And once Boston started knocking down those shots early, you know that 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 Milwaukee can do anything about this. So let's see in both series. Yeah, you go you go to the other series. Memphis was one point away in the first game from being up 2-0 in that series. Well, just think about that one yeah, point, right. one shot away from being mm-hmm. up two zero. And John Morant, every time he gets the ball and drives the paint, I sit back in my chair like this. Yeah, he oh. is. Oh, he man. is explosive. I don't even know if that describes it. I mean, the ability, the lift that he gets. And no, he, it's like he's levitating in the air. And he yeah, man. Yeah. Too. yeah. And he it goes like, in looks an like up he's and on under a trampoline. Move. He goes in an up and under move every time. Yeah. And you can't stop him. Yeah. And then if you make a mistake and, and, and take your off of him, all of a sudden you're on this highlight reel when he he, he posts, <laughs> when he slam dunks on you coming down the paint. And he's uh-huh. not a big kid, but he Yo, is fierce. 6'3". Yeah. 47 Skinny. points. Skinny. 
Yeah. 47 points in back-to-back playoff games against the Warriors. His dad looks like Usher. Have you guys seen his <laughs> dad uh, yeah. in the half-court seats? He, he yeah. is 100% Usher, man. Hey, I'm telling you. <laughs> I've been uh, seeing a, little bit, a lot of people starting to look like uh, – these um musicians, you know, like they, I'm like telling Dean, you, Dean on out. um, looking to Kobe Dean on draft day. That's who he got. Oh on. yeah, man. Hold Tell me, they look like Anthony Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Come from hey, where man. I'm from. <laughs> you know, my, my man, I hate to say, it, my man looked like a straight up pimp in that outfit he was wearing. Yeah, that was that was, <laughs> was quite like. A- that's one of those. Like, come on, man. He's gonna look back in like ten years and be like, "What was I wearing that night, right. man?" Bro, even look what Dave was wearing, man. I come on, man. You know, that looked like he's the color guard. Yeah, that's man. Come like. on, man. Yeah, it was weird. A, a, the striped, a school the striped crossing guard. Yeah. yeah, that's what it looked like. A school, or, or like he was like Miss America. He had like right. the, uh, <laughs> See, we, Mr. We, Georgia. We, he was Mr. We, Georgia. We know these agents front players money to to get a nice suit for the draft yeah. and stuff right. like that. Right. But if 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 I'm his agent, so they had and, endorsement and, money now. They got endorsement. Oh, money endorsement now. money. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, NIL stuff, yeah. Somebody's got to get next to Jordan Davis and say, "Hey, look, man, you on prime time TV now, man. This ain't this ain't the prom. You're not in high school prom <laughs> right now, man. You can't be wearing that on TV, dude. Yeah, seriously. Voted. You look like likely. a crossing guard. Man. <laughs> Voted most likely to look ridiculous. Dude, dude yeah. come on, man. Seriously. Man, I hear oh my you. goodness, I can't I take it with you guys, man. But uh, some of these young kids, they don't know any better, man. You know, especially these kids, they come out of the south, they don't know any better, man. You know, you give them a little money. Some of them, some of them, it's overkill with some of these kids, man. And here's the problem, right? So we all have the cringeworthy pictures from our from those days. We just didn't have the kind of money they had to be able to wear these crazy That's outfits. True. But That's we true. did we did our best to look like knuckleheads too. I mean, let, let's be honest. It's true. So, it's I look like I look like Lincoln Hayes from the Mod Squad series back in the 80s, man. I had, <laughs> I had the afro out to here and stuff. Yeah. Man, you see my old pictures. My kids loved it. My oldest daughter loved to throw my old pictures up on Facebook and stuff. Yep. I look like Lincoln Hayes from the Mod. Now, what I would give just to have. I'm with I had a mullet, man. I had a mullet. I have, no, I don't. Yeah. No. I look like a hot player. send me a picture of that. I, I will. I'll get it. I'll pull it out. I, I I might have don't uh, don't do I'll it, Rob. Rob, Rob, Rob. Barrett will have that picture all over I'm this show it. tomorrow. Man. I will. Oh, uh, I'll find it. I I and you know mullets are actually back in now. Which I, right, I, right, right, right. Yeah. It was a bad look then, boys. It's a bad look now. But anyway, hey, yeah. hey, Rob, Rob looked like you stepped straight out of Welcome Back, Connor. I did. It, <laughs> I, I, it was uh, it was not pretty, man. It was oh, not pretty. Man. I, but I'm with you. I. I take it. I'll take it back. I, I always had the Cavadas, man. I always had a Cavadas or a box, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, you had good. It. You had good hair. You had good hair. And hey, one of my grow. comments, what, yeah. one of our commenters said, "Hey, I love Nicole Dean's outfit." Yeah. Okay. Fit. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gigi. Gigi okay. liked yeah. it. Yeah. Gigi yeah, okay. was down with yeah. it. All right. All right. Hey, man. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Works. Yeah, okay. Hey, hey, Gigi. Better. You know he looked like uh, Anthony Hamilton, man. <laughs> look, dude, <laughs> these guys are all. Put Anthony Hamilton up. He put him up. I bet he looked just alike, bro. Uh, hey, when I saw Nicole Dean, the first thing I wanted to start doing was, "Who is the man that would risk <laughs> his neck for a brother, man?" <laughs> Shaft. Can you dig it? <laughs> oh my yeah, god. god. <laughs> oh man. All right, That's Sixers tonight, guys. So we know the way the last game went two days ago. Uh, we know Embiid's not playing again. We know Lowry's not playing again. We 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 talked to Amy a little bit earlier, Amy Fadul from NBC Sports Philadelphia. We got her take, and, and her thing was you got to knock some threes down or else you're toast. Oh, look, Derek, look, look, look at the Captain. Also, is Amy coming back again? No offense to you guys. Come on, Captain. Come on, Captain. Of course Amy will be back. Hey, man, and that's your fishing buddy, dude. Yeah, that's, man. that's the captain, yes. It, and he it, dimed you out about your billboard, too. He, you're having a tough you, day with the captain. No, friends like that, man. And, exactly. and you know what? And like I said, when he called me, he was like, uh, hey, just so you know, they want your head getting all big. You're a sea doc. You know how we are a sea doc. I'm like, yeah, I know. Sea doc is where our boat, we're at uh, Schooner Island. Sea doc is the dock we're at. You know, you got an yeah. A, B, C, D, E, uh, F, and a G lot. Okay. But is he gonna be doc, on the boat? you can't play. Is yes. he going to be on the boat? Yes, I can't wait to talk to Captain on Saturday. He's got all I the dirt, I think, Derek. You, you you better come back with some serious wait, dirt. Monday, he knows where wait, all the bones are buried, bro. I can't all the wait. bodies, all the bones, all that stuff. Bro. I like it, man. I like it. All right, so give me uh, give me your yeah. key here tonight, D Gun. My Sixers key tonight wise. is 76ers have to knock down their threes. You're not going to have a good measure of success without him be trying to drive the paint on his Miami collapsing defense in no way, shape, or form. You have to do exactly what Boston did against the Bucs. What you didn't do the first game, you have to come back and do efficiently tonight. If you can knock down those threes and and and, um, and um, 
and, and open up that defense and allow Tyrese Maxey. What? It Just should gone. be Wednesdays with Amy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got I to gotta talk to her when I get off is the that, show. Does that mean Derek's out? It's have... just me, Barrett, and Amy? Is that yeah, how that yeah. works? Okay. We're going okay. to have, we have, have a family meeting when I get off this show today. Man. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. you know, I, if, they can, if they can knock down those threes and open up that defense and force Miami to play more honestly in, in man-to-man situations, they don't have anybody. I've said this uh, after Monday's game. They don't have anybody that can guard Tyrese Maxey one-on-one. And him with him getting that first step, to the, I think that changes the complexion of the game. Does it mean the Sixers to win the game? No, because Miami is so athletic on both ends of the court, and right. they're so deep. Their bench is so deep. They have eight players playing at least 27, 28 minutes a game. That's unheard of. I you know. know. But at least it'll make the game more entertaining from my perspective. Well, I, Barrett, how about you? What, what, what has to happen for them to survive? Tempo, 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 and more tempo. You know, we can't afford to stop. Um, you can't afford to let them sit up in, in, in on defense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Which is... So they probably had a powder blue tux. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can dig up the prom pictures. I'll, I'll, I'll share them. I'll share them. Yeah. But yeah, um, we uh, we got to keep tempo, man. You know this this game. We can't afford to sit up and 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 run half court offense the entire. I agree. Night, you know? This needs to be a track meet. Yeah, it needs to. You know that way yeah, you man. use you use the players that you have. You know, I mean, at this point, Harden's the only one that doesn't have that up pace game. Yep. You got everybody else does. So get the ball, get it out of the drive, you know, and you got to rebound yeah. better. Yeah. I might, yeah. Barrett, I might put Maxi at the one and, and get Harden off the ball a little yes. bit and, yes. and see what can happen exactly. there. See if he could just, you know, exactly. wreak havoc and, and just do anything at this point. But you know what I really worry about, too, on top of it? Like, Spolster's a really good coach. And I, yeah. I just feel like whatever yeah. Doc's going to counter with, Spolster will just have an answer. I mean, that, that concerns me, too. But I'll say this. It sounds obvious here, but, you know, Danny Green, who's been through playoff wars, needs to be better than he certainly was in game one. And, right, and it, right. as bad as the, the Sixers bench is, George Yang was a pretty good bench player for them all year. Yes, he he's was. He's got to show up. These guys got to yeah. show up, man. I mean, yes. like, I think yes. Maxi will get his. And, you know, Harden is what he is at this point, but you know kind of what it's going to look like. It's the other guys who have to step up. Tobias Harris has more than done his job, but it's the other ones that have to help somewhere. They don't get that. Because Miami. Hero's going to get you 20 off the bench. You know that. Uh, Gabe Vincent filling in for for Lowry. I mean, they have some depth. They can throw yeah. Duncan Robinson in there if they're losing just to get some threes jacked up. Ma- Sixers Maxie, don't have those options. No, Maxi needs to have one of those 30-point nights that he had yes. against Toronto. He's yep. got to put up 30. And that's a lot to put on a young player. But he's got to he's got to step it up as well. Tobias, Tobias, just keep doing what you're doing. Tobias has been the only constant so far. Yep. You know, um, keep doing what you're doing. But you need additional help. If if Harden can can knock down threes, if 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 Maxi can find that seam and drive the paint, put up thirty plus, you know who knows? Maybe they steal one. I mean, what's my wife talking about, man? She's Uh-oh. Amy's colorful and can call them all out with a smile. She's the boss. Oh man, really? I mean, really? Is that where we're She's going? right. Is, well, is she telling any lies there? No, no, but no, but I don't want to admit it. See, I hate to admit it. So. <laughs> You guys, are, there's going to be a team meeting. There's going to be a. Well, yeah, we're, we're not going to be able to reach in Baron yeah, yeah, after the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and another yeah. thing is, another thing is, um, we have to make sure that George plays better, man. He's got to give me more than you know, single digit, you know, points. The yank. You know, he's got to play. You know, he's got to play, man. He's got to light I it up. Hit threes, a bucket. Man. Hit a bucket. Oh well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he was over seven. Hit a bucket, we, man. We know what he brings to the table. It's stand still. Knock a three down. That's yes. your game because he doesn't give you anything else. He doesn't have the athleticism to do anything else. So you better do that because there's nothing else that you, you're going to be able to give. The other right, thing right, is, right, is right, right. as much as they're missing and beat, and I get it. Like you're going to take a hit on the on the re, with the rebounding without it. There's no doubt. But you can't get killed to the tune of the amount of offensive rebounds and second and third chances that Miami yeah. got in that last game. Hey, you you no. have got to do a better job rebounding. Have to. Have yeah. to rebound. Oh. Have to have to make sure we hit drop shots. Have to keep the tempo up. We do all those, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Here's the we problem. We do all there. that. We're, we're sitting there like if they do this, if they, like we're going on. Well, I'm getting toes out that I'm going to. I don't. I, I used all my fingers. <laughs> I just. I don't. I wish I had. I said this to you guys before game one. I wish I had some optimism. I I, I, don't, I guess the only thing I can lean on is I didn't think Miami played great in that first game. I, like I don't think they're right. a great team. Right. I don't right. think Miami compares to Boston or, or Milwaukee, frankly. 
it, it, that's what kills you if Embiid was healthy. I think this is a knockdown drag out that probably goes six or seven. Go seven, yep. right, if, right. If he's playing. So it, it's frustrating to me that the Sixers are trying to do this with one arm tied behind their back. But I'm sorry. I think ultimately they may give you the same thing they gave you, like a tough first half in it in the third, and then ultimately they just don't have enough firepower to survive it. And I think, you know, the, the, it, it caves in. The roof eventually caves in in that late in the game, and they don't have it. I hope well, I'm let's, wrong. Let's, let's see what happens when uh, Miami comes to Philadelphia. You know, when you got you got 20,000-plus screaming Sixers fans in the building, you know, in, in game three. Let's, possibly let's see what happens Embiid. Yeah. yeah, possibly, possibly Embiid, Embiid. With, with a mask on probably, you know. Let, let's see what happens then. You know, I'm, I'm hoping the Sixers could steal one tonight. I don't think it's going to happen. But then again, you know, look at the other two series. I thought, I honestly thought Golden State, and it could still happen. I thought mm-hmm. Golden State would take care of Memphis. Even though Memphis is a two seed, two seed, Golden State's playing like that team from 2015, 16, when they just crushed people. I thought Golden State have a, had a chance to sweep this series. But, you know, Miami said, hey, look, we might be the youngest team in the playoffs right now, but we can ball. And man, and like I said, I can't say it enough. They were one basket away from being up 2 0. Yeah. On Golden State. Yeah, they have Man. a special player. Morant's spe- and you know what? They're, they're well coached, but they have guys like Bain, like guys they develop there. Yep. Yep. They're they're yep. on a good yep. path. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, they are. They're going to be. They good. got a good nucleus for years to come. Yep. Yeah, the other one tonight. Uh, you got Phoenix and the Mavs, and Phoenix won Game One. Phoenix is another one. When they're healthy, man. When when everybody's rolling, they got Booker back now. Uh, they're a, they're gonna be a tough. That's gonna be fun if it's Golden State and Phoenix in the in the Western Conference. Oh finals. my goodness! Yeah, that oh, I, I would fun. love to see that matchup. Two teams that can shoot, two teams that get physical, two teams that have role players that that can roll up their sleeves and do all the dirty work. That's yep. gonna be a physical series. That's going to be one of those old school physical series that we were accustomed to seeing back in the early '80s. You know, and I hope the refs don't tighten up the foul calling in that series. Let these dudes play, man. Let them let them hash it out. Let them settle it like playground ball, man. You know, um, I I don't want to see a series won by the refs. I want to see a series <laughs> won by individual play. That's what I want to see. Well, that that's right. why. And believe me, I'm not. I'm no Draymond Green, you know, lover here. But that was absurd when he got tossed from that game. Yeah, the man. Other. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, come on, man. And, and how many times do we have to say nobody come, pays to see the referees? You pay to see superstars. Right. You play right. pay to see teams at their best with the with the most firepower they can have. It's just it's highly frustrating. But there's too much of that in the league. But you're right. It feels like Derek, we're starting, and it actually hurts James Harden. But we're starting to yeah, trend yeah. more towards letting these guys play a little bit because Harden. That I'll tell you, the, the the two guys got really hurt by the NBA, right? Letting the, the stop calling all that nonsense. Harden and Trey Young yeah. were both yeah. guys who were affected by that. Yeah. Who would just do the dribble into a guy's chest. And try yep. and draw the foul. Harden still gets a couple of them here and there, yep. Yep. but he doesn't know how to adjust to not getting that call anymore. Nope. You know, you got to find it. another and, way. And Barrett, he it's in his head too. Like yep. once he doesn't get one early, it, yes. it, it screws with him in, yep. in his mind. It's not. He's not even trying to make the shot anymore. I agree. He's not even looking at. He's just throwing up his hands. You're right. Yeah. Yep. He's not even. He's not even looking to try to shoot the ball. He's flopping it out before he. I'm like, come on, man. And I then know. when he doesn't get the call, he stands up with his hands up like, yeah. And what he doesn't happened? get back on what defense. No, he and he doesn't down. get back. Yeah. yeah. He sits down. He stays down. That play. How about that? In there. So the play. It was the first half. I think he drives. He gets knocked to the floor on the baseline, and it's five on four the other way. And he doesn't yeah. even attempt to get back. Like, no, come on, no. man. Anyway, all right. So yeah. tomorrow, Chris Long is going to join us, among other guests that we will have for you uh it's been a lot of fun today thank amy for duel thanks shield kapadia of course you can check them out just go to our youtube network jacob media you can check out all the stuff that we did all our guests and all our shows in their entirety segments whatever you need xander kraus great job producing the program barrett fun look at look enjoy your last day of uh, uh of 20 that you yeah. are today uh <laughs> derek enjoy your last day of 21 Today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I am Rob. So we will be back with you guys tomorrow. We appreciate everybody in the comment section, everybody tuning in, and uh, tell a friend and smash that like button. We will talk to you at Sports Take.
you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on X. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Lincoln Financial Field is home to more than just our hometown team. It's a landing place for dreams. Invest in the future of our students from all over Philadelphia and get an exclusive tour of the stadium at the Blocks Aspire to Dreams Gala, hosted by Brian Taff of 6ABC. While we aspire to build, our students aspire to dream. Join us for the Blocks Gala on Thursday, May 5th at Lincoln Financial Field. Seats are limited, so reserve yours today at blocks.org slash gala. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resorts. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. 